welcome back. So recently um, we've been working on the RelayJS server. Um, as you can see that it's live here. In fact, I probably should have put the link in the stream title, but you guys know where it is by now. Uh, Nightbot will frequently remind you it's at that URL. Just have to navigate there in your browser. Um, you will have to create an account. Unfortunately, a password is required. So, um, try to keep it civil and appropriate, you know. I'm sure that I could find some way to close accounts and ban accounts and all that if I really had to, but I'm hoping I don't have to go there just yet. Um, well, I could IB ban. That's something I understand. Anyway, um, this server's been up and running for a while. Um, we've got the ability to view games that are in play. We've got player ratings showing here. And uh, one thing I'm thinking I'm working on today is expanding that player rating concept to um, also apply not just uh, ELO ratings, but Glico style ratings, and Glico 2 to be precise. So before the stream started, uh, I did start changing some of the server code, and then it occurred to me that, you know, either I could make some progress with this and or I could get a game and or just publicize the fact that we've made some progress with the server. Um, so it used to be that there was a custom implementation of ELO right here. I've removed that and substituted in a third-party library which has this um, function called the Glico2. That third-party library it goes by the name of Glico2 Lite. Um, and we see that I'm just putting in some kind of bogus parameters. Um, I may even have this incorrect in terms of uh, whether you gain or lose points. Uh, it's possible I might have that backward, in which case uh, losing might not be the worst thing to ever happen. Anyhow, um, so I took a look at the API, and this is how you are supposed to call it. You call it with your player's uh, rating, rating deviation, and rating volatility and as well as the opponent's um, rating, the opponent's um, rating deviation, and the result. And once you have all those parameters, it calculates what's the new rating. Um, and it does so returning a structure that has these three elements that call uh, rating, um, RD, and volatility. Um, so right now I'm just taking the rating part of that and pushing that back into the data structure which we already had, um, which had just a single rating. And what I'm thinking is what I ought to do um, is map that from, oh, okay, well, map that to uh, this kind of naming convention. That way in the schema we'll have user dot rating dot and then we'll have R, R, D, and volatility right there. So in fact this is what I gotta do. I already filed an issue with the developer of that library informing them that you know if you could just follow the standard, that would be great. I know it's fun to come up with your own ways of naming things, but when there's already a way of naming it and it works perfectly well, please try to abide by it. That would be just nice for me. Anyway, because um, what would bug me is if I have to call something user.rating.rating. Dot dot um, that just doesn't seem like a good way of naming it. And um, ultimately, uh, what I do want to show on the screen, um, let's see, uh, ultimately, uh, HTML should display um, R plus minus two times RD. And 
say that that is the 95% confidence interval. And that's something I've suggested to Lee Chess, and like forever ago they had it that way, and um, or something like that, and then they backed off from it. Um, because it looks kind of hokey when you say that somebody's rating is 1500 plus or minus 700. I get that. I get that that looks odd. On the other hand, really, ratings are just estimates anyway. And putting question marks next to players' names isn't helpful. It's best to tell them as much as you know. And the most that we know is that your rating is somewhere in that enormous range of, well, let's see. I'm sorry, it'd be, yeah, you start at 1500 with a rating deviation of um, 350. So your 95% confidence interval would be 1500 plus or minus 700, which would say somewhere roughly between 700 and 2300. Actually, let me check the paper. Let me check the paper. Uh, let go to example of the Clicko 2 system. Does this mention anything about an initial parameter? Uh, I think it, at least here we're saying, yeah, players unrated set the rating to 1500 and the RD to 350. Set the player's volatility to 0.06. Um, so that's the recommendation. Um, and then there's recommendations about values to use for tau based on how much you expect a player's volatility to be volatile. Um, that has more to do with um, how erratic do you think the results are going to be. Um, so it says reasonable choices are between 0.3 and 1.2. Um, I think honestly with relay chess, well, okay, let me go back here. Reasonable choices are between 0.3 and 1.2. Although the system should be tested to decide which value results in greatest predictive accuracy. Smaller values of tau prevent the volatility measures from changing by large amounts, which in turn prevent enormous changes in ratings based on very improbable results. So, yeah, the larger tau is, um, the more the ratings can fluctuate because the more you're expecting that improbable results are actually probable. Um, if the application of Glico2 is expected to involve extremely improbable collections of game outcomes, it should be set as, as small as 0.02 or 0.2. Um, okay, so I had that backward actually. Smaller values of tau prevent the volatility measures from changing by large amounts which in turn prevent enormous changes in ratings based on very improbable results. Um, so if you have a large tau, when there's a improbable result, ratings fluctuate a lot. Um, when you have a small tau, um, then when improbable results happen, the ratings don't wildly change. Um, so, okay, and the author explains if the application of Wico2 is expected to have or involve extremely improbable collections of game outcomes, and I think such is probably true in Relay Chess, then we want to set tau to a low number. Um, so that's one thing I didn't look at in this third party library is what value of tau are they using? Um, might not even matter. I mean, this is just for fun anyway. Um, but let's take a look at the source code for Glico2 Lite. Um, okay, so it looks like I have to go through here. And then we can get to the project source code page. And then from here, we can, I mean, here it explains it returns a rating, RD, and volatility. I might end up customizing this for myself anyhow. Um, let me take a look at how they coded this. Where's the code? Where's the code? Um, index? Is that really? 
maybe that's what it's called update rating um, okay option stat tau oh wow so that's wait um i guess they're saying that yeah the uh, default tau of a uh, half or 0.5 um so that's cool let's see options equals assign empty set I'm rating of 1500 tau 0.5 um options or an empty set so if options aren't provided the final argument is just an empty set um the second Thing in this options list is um, the rating defaulting to 1500 with a tau of 0.5 um, that seems kind of like a weird option I don't know how this is all coded but whatever um, yeah interesting this is the first argument so what's the point of having three arguments here? Is the first one, this empty set, going to be a return type? Is the second set going to be all the data that you expect are necessary for the calculation? Is the third set going to be I don't know what? I, I don't know how this is accomplished. What I do know is that um, divides by the API. Um, and that API is defined here. Um, and yeah, author points out that Glico 2JS um, just has a ton of, uh, I was going to say cruft, I don't know if that's the right word with it, but it's just got lots of dependencies and much unused code for this simple purpose of just calculating a new rating. Um, so what I want to do is find a way to transform this into a three argument thing which has a rating in rd and the volatility but the rating goes by the name r so let me take a look at that javascript um, rename return rename map p i think is what i'm looking for is there a way to uh, rename a key uh, you could wrap the work function and pass it to the object prototype um, make sure you copy all the attributes uh, there's really no clever way to do this um, and yeah okay so there's a way to do it in JavaScript EMCA script 5 um, So that'll work at least on the server side you should have a relatively new javascript with node.js um, even so what i'm doing doesn't require something as drastic as that because i know what the api is going to be um, so what i can do um so that's the one half of things is um I can define my thing var new ratings to equals. Uh, this is going to look extremely hokey, but what can you do? Uh, so we're going to say that white is going to be um, new. Oops, we have, we have a new data structure here. Um, yeah, the map is correct. Uh, R equal to uh, new ratings dot white dot rating um, with R D is equal to at least I think this is how to do an assignment in JavaScript um, in volatility equal to new ratings dot white dot volatility <coughs> pardon me and then 
for black, we're going to do the same thing. And so, uh, I mean, I shouldn't need to do that sort of stuff, but whatever. Ultimately, what I'm going to need to do um, is transform um, the, uh, how's this go? Can I say Mongo Relay Chess uh, the Users not Find. So we see we got stuff there. Um, here we got attributes like rating and values of 1500. Uh, um, what I need to do is transform that into a rating mapped to three attributes of R, R, D, and volatility. Um, uh, wait a sec. I think I actually have something convenient here. Let me see if I've got this at the ready. But if I do, then I don't need to go searching on the internet to find it. Uh, Lila bin, um, what would this be? MongoDB, let's see. Uh, which of these things transform data? So, I think this transforms something. Yeah. So, I'm going to want to do something here that, um, preferably one record at a time, um, to transform the ratings into the new format. Um, so I should pick a victim, uh, maybe the guest account. Yeah, the guest seems like a reasonable account to make a victim of. Um, so who cares if the guest has ever messed up? Nobody plays as guest anyway. Uh, so... How do I do this? How do I say I'm going to take a key um, that's part of a user record? In fact, I want to see if there's like a user sort of thing here. Not that this even matters. Uh, user for, well, let's take a look at user three. Okay, so. Actually, what I should do is just create a new collection, and then I can transform the stuff into that new collection. Um, what a mess. But yeah, that's that makes sense. Um, so we're going to copy... MongoDB user three js here. Um, although here's the wrong place to put it. Uh, okay, it's make dir with dash p to create the whole path. Uh, user three goes into bin MongoDB. So, oops, didn't mean to put that in the background. I was trying to just hit Control X to decrement. Um, uh, so, so we're gonna use this to, oops, use this as 
So then rename the file to user2.js. Collection.drop. Okay, so it's going to drop the user2 collection, which is it's important that that's the right collection. Um, what is NN? Not null. Okay. What is NN useful for? It's not even used. That's funny. Um, so, what I want to say is not what we're doing here. I don't care about that. I don't care about that. Um, I want to say u dot rating is equal to um, r equal to u dot rating um, r d is equal to we we'll set everybody to three fifty and volatility is equal to point oh six. Okay. Um, now I forget how am I supposed to do how am I supposed to execute script against a particular database? Um, eval here. Evaluate JavaScript. Uh, specify as an argument. Mongo does not load on an its own of our, our Mongo does not load its own environment when evaluating code. As a result, many options of the shell are not available. Okay, that's cool. So if I say Mongo uh, database name and then say eval user 2.js user2 is not defined okay um <laughs> this feels stupid to ask but what if i want to do mongo uh, database create uh how do i create a database in mongo use database name I'm sorry, I'm not looking to do that. Mongo create collection. How do I do that? Um, db.create collection. Name options. Uh, okay. Cool. What does it mean to drop a collection anyhow? Yeah, I thought that dropping a collection got rid of it. Yeah, so it does. Okay. So the script I was copying from, that's really weird. Well, okay. I don't know why this user thingy thing I copied from didn't already have a statement to create a collection. Um, so to evaluate, how do I create a collection non-interactively? Um, and what does this create collection return? Okay, it returns OK one. Um, so we've got to say db dot create collection and call it user two. So that should work. Is so weird. 
Okay, so user2 does not exist. Um, so I can actually ignore this drop command. And declare the sound here. That's really, really weird. Okay, so users to migrate for each insert into the collection. Okay, that should work, right? Reference error shell eval user2 is not defined. Uh, where? I'm confused. Do I have to say like this particular file? No. In Mongo. Um. Wow. Do I have to specify database name in some kind of fancy way? Oh, I should be able to say Mongo and then database name and I'm so confused. Okay, you know what? Um, oh, I see. So I'm forced to do it this way. Okay, that's cool. But when I'm dealing with the database interactively, then there's not the same constraints. Um, okay, MongoDB JavaScript create collection. I want to know how non-interactively to do this. This feels so ridiculous that I don't know it, but you know, there's an opportunity to learn. Um, oh, so apparently that's how you do Node.js. Um, Mongo. Well, apparently this is the right way to do it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so... I'm not understanding some of this database administration stuff. you think that it would not be a major hindrance, but apparently it is. Oh, sorry, yeah. Mongo uh, eval. How do I do that? How do I specify a database name when doing that? Do I have to really put the database name into the evaluation script? Okay, Mongo test and then eval. Oh. Wait, now I could. I think eval takes a file name as well. Um. Okay, where was it that they had the official documentation for this? Official documentation. Write scripts for Mongo shell. Open collections. Um, okay, so I'm really not attempting to do anything too fancy. Oh, so the deal is if I want to execute a file, don't call eval. Just provide the file name. See, that would have been, well, maybe I should know. I don't know. Maybe I just had completely wrong expectations on my part. Um, I should have occurred to me that, you know, this is something worth trying. Migrating zero users. Okay. But if I do mongo relay HS, um, 
db users.find. We still have our users there. Uh, so the deal, uh, what's the deal here? Users to migrate equals db.user.find. Um, see, now I've got to define it this way. And if we drop the collection each time I want to recreate it. Um, so. I'm going to assume that this is still valid here, but why do I have no users to migrate? That's got me really... Oh, because it's called user, and for some reason... Um, for some reason, some clever person thought why not call our database table name users instead of user? Uh, okay, fine. Well, it's not a table name. It's a database collection name, but you get the idea. So there was no thing called user. It was called users. It's that kind of thing which drives a person crazy after some period of time. But, you know... Uh, you live and you learn. Um, so, migrating 54 users. Okay. Um, and so now I should be able to say Mongo Relay Chess. Um, yeah, I need to figure out access control for MongoDB. Uh, show collections. E by e dot users oh user to dot drop collection uh db dot user to dot drop db dot user to dot drop for real okay show collections oops don't want to call clear from here because we're not in the main shell all right, db.users2.find with an ID of guest. Oh, wait, what? What did I typo here? Missing a end parenthesis after, oh, right. I'm sorry, I have to specify a map. Um, there's nobody with an ID or an underscore ID of guest. It's probably an ID of guest or probably a name of guest. Okay, you got me confused, so in the interest of time, find everything. Let's find it with a name of lowercase guest. Okay, cool. It's clear work. Now, so let's clear from here. Um, so that was the thing we're interested in. Just, and I pared it down to just that, so there's not all kinds of noise on the screen. So now we see that I do have um, a user who's got a rating and that rating has three attributes um, that's interesting I don't know uh, maybe some of you do how are numbers represented inside a database or inside a collection I see that R is set to 1500 and RD is set to 350 does anybody happen to know, is that a 350 integer, is that a double, or is that just like JSON? And JSON is of a nature where, you know, ratings can be just about anything. 
or I'm sorry, numbers can be represented in a multitude of different ways. It's more likely the latter of all of those. Um, but yeah. What I'm going to do now, for my own sanity, is I'm going to create a database. Now I'm doing this. I'm going to create a collection called user and users are going to be stored in the user collection not in the users collection right okay well never mind apparently the standard uh, i don't know why apparently the standard is to name things um, as plurals so yeah, the collections are called games, system indexes, users. Uh, and I understand that only system indexes is the built-in um, collection that these other two were created by the other developer. But, you know, it occurs to me that um, I'm kind of swimming against the tide if I try to start renaming collections without first understanding why Mongo does things differently than, say, a relational database where things um, do not have plurals, where collections aren't pluralized, or where relations aren't pluralized. For some reason, they felt it necessary to, or useful to do so in MongoDB, um, and that's apparently the convention, so it doesn't hurt for me to stick with it. Um, Especially because the other developer is totally on board with that. So, it works for me, I guess. Um, <laughs> oh, so I see I've put my IP address on the screen. I've probably put other people's IP addresses on the screen. Again, arguments for me not containing all this information on my disk. It'd be much better if, um, you know, identifying sorts of information were not on my computer. Um, I just say that because in the unlikely circumstance that somebody hacks my computer, retains all this data, maybe they manage to do one single malicious thing with all the data, and I am somehow liable, maybe. So that's something I'm trying to avoid. But what can you do? Um, I do like that there's a separation of um, display name from ID. I do not understand why there is a difference between name and display name. Um, it's cool that title is its own attribute. Uh, it's, obviously a good thing that the password is salted and hashed um yeah something weird is going on with my mic okay let's I'll check that am i clipping or something or i wonder if my internet's cutting out or uh, i don't know what what does it sound like there's some kind of weird echo or something going on? I don't know what to tell you about that. It's equally likely to be on my end as yours. Um, I suppose I could... Yeah, I do, I do know my voice is deep. Let me try turning on my speaker so I can hear what it sounds like. And of course, as soon as I do so, there's going to be an echo. Um, so bear with me through that. Um, so we're going to go through that little exercise here. Um, if I can type in the URL correctly. I did observe this on one of the videos on demand as well. I don't know what the cause is. Let's hear what it sounds like. Any second now, I'll be able to hear it. Come on. Oh, okay, so I'm seeing 
uh, a warning below my stream saying that the broadcast is not set to constant bitrate. Um, so, I mean, that's untrue, but let's hear what it sounds like. Um, so, I mean, that's untrue, but let's hear what it sounds like. So it is deeper. It's definitely deeper in register um, than I am, though not very much so. Um, it's maybe a third or a fourth down in terms of musical pitches. Um, yeah, it's saying that I don't have constant bitrate enabled, and I very much do. Um, so I'm really confused by how that could be the case. Um, let's see, what's my, or I'm sorry, continuous bitrate or whatever that's called. Um, the average, it's saying my bitrate is 500 kilobits per second and that my max is 1500. Let me just double check that. Yeah, no, I've got continue, uh, constant bitrate enabled. Um, with the constant bitrate of 800. And it's telling me that my bitrate is varying between 500 and 1501. Hey, Zwish. Yeah. That's what happens when I'm tired. <laughs> um, so, let me check my router settings. Um, again, I can do this... Um, not showing it on the stream because that's just too much info. Okay. Man, there's so many typos. So we type in the super secret um, username and password for the router. And then check. Um, okay, I'm going to toggle my only router setting that ever does anything. And we'll see if that improves the quality of the audio somehow. I would be surprised. Um, okay, so in our Relay Chess Discord, yes, it is possible to spectate active games. Yep. So. Eventually, we'll find a way to kickstart this and get enough people interested. Um, okay. <laughs> well, it's just a lot less energetic. So, I mean, it's nothing to be worried about. So anywho, um, yeah, I successfully transformed the user's collection into a user's two collection, which has this rating thing set. Um, so I think the next logical step, well, I was going to ask, does anybody know anything about MongoDB or JSON or any of this? Because I sure don't. I'm playing with fire. I'm going to break something. And what can you do? Um, I mean, there's, I guess, one other thing I could try with my stream settings. I could try bumping up the bitrate, but it's probably going to cause people to disconnect. Um, I'm currently streaming at 800 bitrate. Um, let's see. If you want, I could bump up the bitrate, which may or may not have anything to do with the audio. Let me know. Um, I mean, there's nothing for me to worry about, I'm sure. And part of the reason I know that is, like, I've been in choir for some number of years, and I know that I just have this incredible vocal range. Um, so I can hit lots of low notes. And I can hit 
higher notes than number of people. Yeah, it's it's nothing unusual. Um, anywho, so we got this attribute rating here. Um, it's nice when we type exit, the database tells us buy. You know, just in case we didn't know that we left. I mean, maybe it's somehow possible to get stuck inside MongoDB, inside MongoDB, and have like multiple nested Mongo shells and need it to tell you buy when you're done. But this just seems like, I mean, it seems about as useful as the sl command. And in Linux, there's command ls to list files. If you typo it and hit enter really quickly, you get a train. Um, so, uh, and then it's also customary for like, there's ls, aef, and things. Uh, oops, see, I can typo all over the place. Um, you can get all kinds of fun information when you provide additional arguments to ls. And again, if you're typing really quickly, you can say sl, al, and then you get like all kinds of people on this train screaming help and stuff. So, um, my point is that this, um, MongoDB telling you buy when, after you type exit is about as necessary as this SL command is for doing fun stuff. Um, the other fun thing to note is that, um, SL, you can't even interrupt the animation unless you provided this dash E argument. Otherwise you can't escape. So, um, I'm trying to remember, I had this cool script that would just run a train across the screen over and over. Um, do I still have this here too? I would say, okay. Um, so if it's a cat user and then pipe to cow say, right? Yeah. Let's see, that's the best way to present your files. Um, anyhow. Oh man, I need some water. I'll be back in just a minute here. So do enjoy that cow. One smart looking cow. Okay. A couple problems. One of which is Steam crashing on startup. I'm gonna reinstall Arch. Oh, okay. Yeah, good luck with that. Let's see. Now I'm curious here. Can I get the cow to like format the bubble without adding line breaks? Um, I need to know. I'm sorry, we're going on a tangent of a tangent of a tangent here. Um, default is to wrap at 40. Um, is there any way to tell it? Just don't wrap. I don't know. Wrap at the file width, maybe cowsay-w80, whoops, that's not right, that's capital W, there we go, so that's how you migrate your users. So my point here is that now I've got a collection that I can use um, to, uh, oh, with a new code, such I can get accurate user ratings. So let me go back. Um, and then 
gonna step into what's it here? I'll go into the server code. Uh, go into handle games. And where is it gonna go? Somewhere here. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, I see. I'm still curious why the username is not the user ID. Maybe that's not for me to know. Um, oh, hang on, where is the user collection? Uh, <clears throat> user collection. Okay. And I'm going to create user to collection just because I can. Okay. Okay, where's this defined? Um Okay, so down here. Oh, here it is. User two collection. It's gonna be users two. Hooray. Meaning that now our handle games. When we update the users, we can do so in both collections until such time that I finish the transition. Ooh. Ooh. I have to sneeze, maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. Um, set rating equal to new ratings too. How about that? New ratings two dot black and dot white. Now each time, wait, okie dokie, um, so that should populate stuff, um, let me try stopping and starting the application, stop, and put in super ultra secret password and do so incorrectly. And then we say start and check on the status of it. Cool. So now I've got, I'm going to be updating ratings inside both collections until such time that I finish the transition. Um, let's see. I'm going to ignore these files here. Dot get ignore uh, yes. uh, local changes because this is never going to change, I say. And you know that the minute I say that, that there's going to be some reason it needs to change someday. Um, What? Did I not say to ignore that? What have I messed up? HTML, relay, JS, app, so forth. Why, oh why, does it think that that's still something I'm interested in changing? I don't get... I'm confused. Did I spell that wrong? Pretty sure I spelled that right. Maybe there's a dot get ignore somewhere else in this path. Find. Uh, great. Yep. Get ignore. That's just this one. And if I 
this and get the status. I can't get this, I can't make those files excluded. That's really weird. Um, yeah. I don't know why that's, why git ignore is ignoring my changes. Um, regardless, if that doesn't work, I'm just going to revert. I'll just have to remember not to commit those two files. Because these I'm not interested in committing. Reset back to head. Uh, here, status. So here's the set things that have been changed so far without too much of a problem. Um, probably that when I play a game against myself, things are going to break horribly. Um, so let's see. I'm seeing a lot less chatting now that I've upped the bitrate. I'm guessing that's probably because people's connections aren't keeping up. So I'm going to drop it back down to 800 kilobits per second. We're going to be happy with that, I suppose. Um, so, oh, so yeah, next logical test, don't need that, next logical test is try playing a game. So, I'm going to open up browsers 1 and 2 here. Um, I'm going to log out here, log back in as another user. And see, oh, okay, okay, so we have both users in. So I'm gonna, whoa, create a game and join the game, and it's gonna be magic. So, how dare he make that move? Um, but yeah, Frog Fuchsia has been my victim of choice for quite a few games here. It's about time that he gets a win. Or at least a draw. Oh, I can show off threefold repetition here. So, we hit this position twice, we hit that position twice. We bring the knight out, move the knight back, bring the knight back, and then Mike claims a draw. Well, check that out. <laughs> okay, well, that's all the precision you're ever going to need, right there. That's 67 points of goodness. Plus 67.121644863, etc. It's probably more than any user ever wanted to know, but hey, it works. It works. Oh, I wonder, when I go back to the lobby, what are the ratings going to be? Oh, I was just impressed that the threefold repetition thing worked, but... Okay, so player ratings are apparently rounded here in the lobby. I don't know. But yeah, I swapped in the new rating backend. Um, it used to be we had our own repper for how we did rating. And now it's something we're handling ourselves. Um, and it definitely works. Um, yeah, you could probably find some of the digits of pi somewhere in there. Um, so, next step. Um, next step would be when we're performing the calculation, do so. Um, <laughs> user collection. Um, and we do so with rating dot r. Um, player white dot rating dot rd. And player length dot 
creating that volatility. Um, and now that I'm looking at it, what I probably should do. Oh, hang on. So I'm going to say var rating white equals player white dot rating. So we don't end up with tons of redundant code all over here. So I can say rating white dot r, rating white dot rd, rating white dot volatility, rating black dot r, rating black dot rd, and the result. And then for black, we do everything upside down here. Black black.rd, black.volatility, playing against white, playing against white, and then we have to say um, black has the opposite result that white has, and that should do it for, oh, I have to restart the server to get that change to apply. Be fine though. So let's check back here. Um, yeah, so that tells us what we already know is that nobody except myself is logged in. Uh, so I can balance the server. Okay, server's been bounced. Bounced server does run. It's good. Uh, so I can refresh here. See, there's me with my new rating. It's such a great rating. It's the best rating. Gives you all the rating information you ever wanted to know and more. Okay. Well, I think we're done here. Just kidding. Okay. Um, but how great would it be if that were how it worked? Um, okay, I don't think I need this open anymore. Well, I'll leave it. I'll leave it there. It's okay. Get status. Okay, add socket server. Um, so next. Next what? Um, what do I want to do with these ratings? Yeah, well, it tells you as much as you'd ever want to know. Probably what you get sent to the front end is not the complete information, but maybe just an estimate. Or maybe the front end should just know how to display the rating. Have I done everything at the back end here yet? I think so. Um, okay. Result at pre ratings equals. I think I already have this information. Uh, where do I have result defined? Whatever. Um, white is equal to rating white, black is equal to rating black. These are the new ratings. That's cool. Um, yeah, so I think that's all handled more or less correctly on the back end. Um,
So now I've got to tailor a front end to uh, do something sane. Uh, after one more quick bounce here. Okay. Yep, server's up and running. Um, so the next part is how do we deal with these awesome ratings in the lobby? How do we deal with the fact that we've got this ridiculous decimal number? It's not even decimal, it's floating point. How do we want to present that? I think the answer is, um, well, the going to, well, let's first find out where that is on the screen. It's hard to fix it without first seeing it. Um, order by rating dot R and where else is that the only place that we see ratings here oh okay wait does that mean that when I put a seek out there that my seek is also gonna have that kind of precision yeah totally does Okay, so I need to address it there as well. Um, hmm. Or maybe the backend needs to do some intelligent things with readings. Um, such that seeks don't look like that. A seek, yeah, in fact, we're going to be, well, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to impose all that burden on the front end. Unless there's a clever way to handle it in the back end. Um, uh, I'll be back in just a minute here.
All right, we're back. Um, so yeah. Oh, I mean, I should check this first before I go too far with that. Let's save the index page. Attempt to re-render it. Does not render. Um, try that. That renders. Um, Cause I'm stuck doing it that way. Okay. What if I try it this way? Well, now I'm confused. How am I supposed to order users? I, mean, I could order them by name. But oh, this is crazy. Um, yeah, I don't know. And I have to learn some Angular. Angular order you by multiple or multi-level properties. Um, Order by nested. Yeah, how do we do this? Oh, come on. These are data manipulations. Oh, do I have to write my own ordering thing? These are pretty awful answers. Read this. Custom sort function. A function. The result will be sorted using the order by operator. Uh, using this operator. Um, <laughs> maybe I just don't order the users or order them by login time or who knows why is coding tricky well, it's because I'm doing things in Angular, and I don't know Angular, and I don't have much respect for it. That's probably why. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to back up to... Only works on arrays, but you're applying it to an object. So you gotta get... Huh. need to give it a string value with the expression. Oh, Angular, it's, um, I don't know that I could explain it that well. Let me look it up. A superheroic JavaScript model view W controller. Um, it's a way of putting together applications using JavaScript. Um, it's pretty popular. That said, it's, I mean, my goodness, you're using JavaScript. Why would you put an entire apple? Why would you create an entire thing using that? It's a web framework. Um, right, yeah. 
So, okay, maybe I have to say order by and then put this in quotes. Uh, it's already doing that. Order by rating colon true. I don't know what true means, but probably means that person doesn't have rating put them last. Regardless, it seems, um, so my goal is to format the ratings here correctly, but the user I want isn't in this collection, it's actually in the user stu collection. So that's going to fail because the order by is going to fail. And it, well, I think that's why it's failing. Um, Users 2 is just an array of users. And I don't know. Don't know what this last argument true here is, but this has to do with what we're going to be presenting. Um, probably means that just we're going to always present the user. Um, but the what we're accomplishing here is just ordering them and then saying we're going to present them or print them. Um, the data isn't an object, is an object of objects, not an array of objects. I've updated your data to make it work. So, order has, okay, data has an attribute order. Order has an attribute always position. Always position um, has a value. I'm doing a very similar thing here. Um, I'm doing a very similar thing, so why does this not work? Order by rating dot r. Um, if I try that, we refresh, inspect the page, and see that somewhere we're no, we don't even get that far. Why does that fail? Um, I don't get it. Do I need to load information out of some other scope to get here? I mean, users too should be populated. Here's a way to test what's actually there. Users two dot link. Users two dot link. We'll see how many players it thinks are online. Okay, so that fails to render. Oh. Oh, is that what's causing this? Yeah, I could blame caching here. That seems like an interesting idea. Uh, the other thing I could try is let's go back and see. I've got all these connection records, but nothing of mention in the log. Um, we look at the complete log, and there's no more info there. Uh, so there was my idea of just looking at a log and trying to figure it out. Um, and so I'm confused. Like. I don't I don't see any errors here. Oh. Oh, could this be I think I know what this is about. Okay, where do I go to fix this? So 
also the deal here. I'm pretty sure it's no fault of um, this index page. The deal here is that this is an index page that's rendered in the browser using the browser's cache of the users that it knows to have been logged in. The way it knows that the users are logged in is um, via the socket server, which says we're going to handle, uh, we're going to publish to users when users have logged in, right? So, um, wait, is this what I'm looking for? That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for HTML. So, for the actual application code, which is over here, which says I need to go figure out what users are logged in. Um, I think that's the problem, is that um, is that it's all confused about which users are and aren't logged in. Um, Oh, hey, Mr. Corrupted. So, I was just making some changes with Glico, getting that all implemented and stuff. Um, let's see, where am I? Uh, I could probably change the index page back. Um, Let's change back the index page and show where we're at. Um, I only made one minor change to the index page. Um, uh, and then we're going to add this change in because I think that makes sense. Oops. So. I refresh the lobby, we've got two players online, and you've got a full Glico 2 rating here. Um, so yeah, I played a game and um, successfully rated the game using Glico 2. Um, I should probably take a look at what um, the rating deviation of these people are. Um, so let's take a look. Um, users two that find with arguments that the name has to be equal to that. So we see here's the new rating. Um, put that up here a little bit higher. So yeah, we've got a rating R, a rating deviation, and a volatility. So all that checks out. Um, but to get that all working, I had to change the structure of the rating attribute. Yeah. So of course now there's all kinds of front-end challenges. Um, because say we do this same find on the other collection. Um, I end up creating a redundant user collection just so I can do that kind of rating. Um, so here we've got the rating, and it's just a single number. I don't know what to do about all the front end stuff that's going to fall out from this. Um, and, well, I think at this point I've got it rating using. Um, sourced by this number here. So I think that means that when I let me get rid of these tabs here, when I go to do new ratings, um, it can successfully use these attributes. I just don't know how to update the users collection to look like the users to collection, or I don't know how to do in place updates, which are kind of scary anyhow. Um,
so uh, I'm not sure what kind of front end things are going to break when I put that change in place um, on the actual users table. I don't know how to like rename a collection and do all that kind of um, database administration stuff. But hey, we've got Glico too. Um, so the next thing I was going to focus on is just getting the presentation layer to look nicer to show, um, in fact, I did comment on this in the code. Uh, let's see, where did I go? Socket server handle games, I think it was. Um, oh, let's see, I was using Glico to Lite as the library. Um, and ultimately we want the HTML to show rating plus or minus two times RD uh, just as the estimate as to how strong the player is. Um, we just used to do something similar. They did rating plus or minus RD and everybody was all confused about what that meant. And rather than clear up, clear up that confusion, they just got rid of the display of the rating deviation. And I'm proposing different tact there. So, need to figure out how to get the presentation layer to look all nice. And figure out like what else I could potentially break by putting this in place. And progress will eventually be made here. I just don't know how quickly. Don't leave that open. So, yeah, I was pleased to find that third party library that can do all the rating for us. Although, one annoying feature is that it returns uh, with the name of rating rather than the name of R. And there's no way that it just doesn't make sense to have a rating comprised of rating RD and volatility, which would be comprised of R, the estimate of the rating, and RD and volatility. Um, so, yeah, in the interim though, until I figure out all that present, well, I should, I should work on the presentation layer rather than try to hack the data. So, yeah. Um, I also don't know if there's a way to cast a number to an integer just for presentation reasons. Login users, oh. Wait, update server users. Okay. Yeah, how do you do rounding? I don't know. There's got to be some way to round that for purposes of this sort of stuff. Um, although, oh wait, this updates the user DB, and this is sourced out of the user DB, so I think that's okay. Um, I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to figure out if I'm missing anything. Okay. I didn't know we were actually doing any rounding client side. Uh, but that's good to know. But that kind of confuses me that like when I put a seek out there, I see, like, that doesn't look very rounded to me. Oh, maybe it is. Maybe I'm, maybe there's just something I don't understand about it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, and yeah, for those interested in playing ever, um, I did fix the caching that was just wrong with my web server. 
um, it's not properly caches styles and graphics and stuff like that because those don't change very often um, Let's see what I can do to get these things to round in the GUI. Um, uh, so in index.html. Oh, okay. Yes, we have to change the rating structure for every user. Um, and just to clarify on that again, currently um, in the user's collection, uh, the rating structure is the number, and where it needs to go is uh, to this three-part element. That's a good question. That's a really good question. Um, so I'll show you what I did, and you tell me what I did wrong. Oops, other than this obvious typo. Obvious typo is obvious. Um, so here's what I did. I said users find and then create a new collection called users2. And then for that collection, perform this update. Um, I don't know if it's possible to do an in place conversion. I'm really, my familiarity isn't so much with this sort of scripting. Not so familiar with MongoDB. Not very familiar with JavaScript. Um, but I know enough to just hack things together to make it work, I guess. Um, <laughs> actually, maybe I should take a look at what the proper RD estimate is for the conversion. Just to be really pedantic about it. Um, so let's take a look. Glico2, example the Glico2 rating system. So if they're unrated, default to 13, or 1500 and 350. Otherwise, use the player's most. Oh. So. This doesn't really provide a estimate for RD. Um, anyway, uh, you know, let me go back and see if I can do an in-place conversion. Uh, I first have to figure out how to copy things into the users to table, and then see if I can do an in-place conversion on the users to table. Um, let me try that. So copy users to, to user. Um, okay. Well, it's awful naming, but here we go. Actually, yeah, that'll work. Um, so now we say Mongo. Mongo. UHS user.js. Um, now if I say mongo relay s user user two dot find okay so we've got a rating there um, and then rather than doing this whole migrating from one collection to another I'll see if it's possible to do it on a single collection. Um, I'm going to assume that the command is called update. I don't know what it's actually called. Um, yeah, we're not going to do the drop. We're not creating collection. Um, um, So we're going to see if I can do an in-place conversion on 
Hang on, that's the wrong collection. I'm going to do it on the backup. Always do things on the backup collection. Or rather, don't do things in production until they're production ready. Um, just double checking this one more time. Um, come on. Double checking it one more time. Just making sure that it all looks right. That looks right to me. Collection is DB users 2. DB users 2 find. Yeah. That looks like the conversion we want to do. Um, so let's try that. Uh, need an object. the deal here. Why <clears throat> why can I not do an update? Um Mongo JavaScript update. How do we do an update? We've got insert, we got there's gotta be an update thing here, right? Oh it's called save. And then updates can be done by update criteria. Wait, what? Wait, what? Question save. Shorthand for insert and update save. If ID is set, the record is updated if it exists or inserted if it's not. Um, well. Okay, well, that seems like a way to do this. Copy. Um, I'm sure as heck not going to remember what that looked like a second ago. Uh, Collection.update ID is equal to say the thing we're updating it's the set of changes that are is that reading is equal to um, u dot reading and id is equal to ID something like this maybe. Let's see if this can perform an in place conversion. Oh thankfully this does get as an array a copy of all the users. Um, now, ideally, you can make this all in a single statement. I don't want to go there. Um, and what I can do is say var rating is equal to blah, blah, blah. Um, var let go is equal to this stuff. And then the rating is equal to the Glico representation of a rating. That should work, I think. Can't be too sure. But it's worth a try. Um, this and cow say just to make sure we got it right I'm being ridiculous in saying that that's a way to double check things okay so we're gonna run the script one copy things over 
and script two to perform an in place update. And then we use some Mongo relay chess users.find. In fact, we've done this before. Oh, hey, look. Hey, look, I broke it all. Isn't it wonderful? Um, so that's what happens when you do in-plus updates. Um, so that's a replacement object. So I have to use a replacement object. Where's my Mongo re Here we are. Okay, so that's why I backed up the data before starting into that conversion. Um, okay, apparently that's what you gotta do. Except if you don't set this equal to root, you set that equal to click. Or Glicko, you set that equal to rating. Wait, you're telling me there's an actual way to perform an update? Um, what do you mean? Have I misread this syntax? Collection update. Criteria. Update. Callback. Update is a replacement object. I don't know a way to update a document. Um, oh, wait, if the replacement object is a document, the matching documents will be replaced. Well, I mean, you're telling me that update is a replacement object, and now you're telling me that the replacement object might be a document or might be something other than a document. Oh, here we go. Oh. To update only selected fields, use the set operator. Okay. So I could say set the ratings equal to this new expression. Double check this. Um, then we run it. And then we see what are our results. Okay, so an in place replacement is. Yeah, you're right. That's the way to do it. And it does work on the backup collection. Um, Now what I'm going to do is going to do a backup. Um, and then check to verify that our backup was successful. Backup is indeed successful. Um, and we're going to say move um, users2.js to convert or maybe glipo.js, I don't know. Move user to user2. Um, so, actually, why don't I rename this to something descriptive? Backup. Users backup.js. Uh, let's say click go to users uh, reading convert.js and then we're going to actually do the in place conversion now that we've performed our backup and the backup is in the users to table um, Just confirm 
we see that we've got that user and in fact all of our users are in that table in user stew or in that collection uh, so that's all good um, uh, so we've got the conversion script which we know does a successful in-place conversion and we've got a backup so now provided that nobody's doing anything crazy on the server at the moment, and nobody is. Um, in fact, I'm going to log out, and I'm going to go over there and log out. So now nobody's logged in. Um, now I'll go relay chess. Okay, we've converted all 54 users. Um, So, um, it's probably better names to call these things, but they work. So that's all good. Um, so then people can log in and deal with all the issues that are caused by that conversion. Oh, hang on. So for me to log in, I can't put my password on screen. That would be too vulgar. Or that would be too, I don't know. That would be too much of a show. It would be too flashy. Here, enjoy this while I go log in. Do, 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 do. Logging in. And, okay, I'm back in. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that particular image by the way. Um, um, hang on. Hang on one second. I have to put out all the fires that I just started. Um, so we've got to go to amp.js um, wait, really? Oh, um, okay, uh, so I got to, let's see, I'm going to have to bounce the server, guys, one sec. sec while I get this stuff in order. Um, oops. I'm going to comment out this. That's wrong now bounce the server. Um, and I, I put the admin password. In. Um, authentication by password failed. Oh, okay, you figured it out. Okay, cool. So it took me a minute there to remember that um, just how that worked. So now everybody's got Glicko ratings, and now everything looks absolutely ridiculous on the front end. Um, uh, get add here. Oh, what happened there? Oh, I was in the root directory. Um, let's 
going to say, how come these other two changes that I said I really don't want to include got included? Um, there we go. Um, so I might want to balance this one more time because um, I'm not going to be using this user to question anymore. Um, yeah, we don't need that. And we can look at um, what was it here? Data.js and say we don't need that. And Now we can specify, oh yeah, now I have to stop and start once more. So I've made the server just a little bit more lightweight. Uh, convert the game free ratings, etc. You know, I don't know very much about that. Um, it's a fair question. I just don't even know where to start to answer that. looks pretty funky, but that's okay. Um, don't need that actually. It's the ratings we would display when you looked at previously displayed games. Oh. Um, I'm trying to think. So, Hmm. So that's an attribute of a game. Well, I guess that depends. Do we care, looking at historical games, what a player's historical rating deviation was? I, hmm, I don't know whether or not that's important. Obviously it's relevant to how ratings get calculated. But I don't know... Well, what does chess base do? What does chess master do? What do all these pieces of software do with regard to historical games? And what does FIDE do? What does USCF do? Does anybody keep track of that information? Now, granted, that could be useful info to keep track of. I'm just trying to think of how expensive is it to maintain that? Um, how expensive is it to not maintain that? Um, because maybe it's easier to do it that way. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Oh, wait. I mean, my perspective actually would be that pre-rating, I tend to go back to a relational database model and say that this is completely the wrong way to model the data in the first place. And that a player's historical rating isn't an attribute of the game, it's an attribute of the player, but that's pedantry and people don't care. And it's chilly in here. Uh, gotta see if I can I don't know, warm the space up a little bit somehow. Give me a little bit to try to address that issue.
Okay, so where to leave off? Um, so, yeah, the more I think about it, um, it would be useful to at least know the rating deviation of your opponent. Um, I don't know how relevant it would be to know the volatility. Um, let me take a look here. Didn't we have that paper open? Apparently not. Um, so, Glypho 2. So how important is this volatility? I know the volatility is used to determine how much that person's rating is varying all over the place. Maybe that is useful info. Um, yeah. Probably a good idea to convert the pre ratings. That way you can know not only what's their rating estimate um, and the width, wideness of the estimate, but also how much over time is that varying. Um, for the front end, should we change? Oh. Um, So here's my thought about how a rating should look. Um, let's see where where is that symbol? Come on, here it is. That's the one. Um, so my thought is that wherever we display a rating, we should display the same way. This is how we want to present it. Uh, is the rating plus or minus twice the rating deviation? I think that would be what people would want. I think that would be what informed users would be interested in seeing. Um, so wherever we want to show some kind of rating, this would be useful info to see. So you guys it for the front end. Do we change the rating display in the client? Or do we change all the utils function to return only a single rating? Yeah, so oh I got all these browser tabs open again. I keep doing that. Um Yeah, Leechess sometimes shows a question mark and then you have to go drill down on the player's profile and figure that all out and <laughs> well, I mean, if anybody wants to debate with me what it means to be informed about ratings, I'm glad to have that debate. Um, I'm just saying that I've taken my time reading through this, and I think I have a sufficient understanding as to what's relevant. Um, it's possible other people might also be informed and might be informed more than myself on some aspects of it. Um, but no, really, this rating plus or minus twice RD is a really strong estimate as to uh, what you think the player's actual strength is. I know people on Leech has freaked out about the numbers and now they freak out about the question mark and they ask what does it mean and how do I get the question mark to go away and whatever. <laughs> huh. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking that's how we want to present it. Um, I'll see if I could... Where's the pre-rating located? You're saying it's part of the game record, right? Um, or the game database. So if I do like, where is it? Where'd it go? It's here somewhere. Ah, Mongo Relations. I say db.games.find. Find nine. No, find. Here we go. So that's what pre ratings consist of. Or 
Let's see. Pre-ratings, white and black. Ratings, white and black. Wow. Um, that's going to be fun. Um, didn't know that we're storing both ratings and pre-ratings here. That's okay. That just means we're going to have some redundant information at some point. But I guess that's unavoidable. Um, yeah, redundancy doesn't hurt in this case. And fixing it to be non-redundant would be... So, like, pre-rating would probably be the rating before the game, and rating would probably be the rating after the game, I'm guessing. Um, and in fact, if you look at this, let's see, where's the result? Winner is black. So we see the pre-rating was 1570 for white, and white lost some rating points, and black uh, gained some rating points. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, so. Yeah, I'm going to write script to convert ratings and pre... Well, <laughs> we don't... At this point, we only have estimates for these. I'm not going to do all the back calculation work uh, to figure out what the actual number should be, but I can fill in something. Um, this is a relative... We're in beta at this point, so I have the liberty to do what I need to do um, to get some numbers to show up. Um, oh, let's see, yeah, copy users back up to games, back up, .js, games, back up, user, game, g, there we go, that's how we migrate the games, uh, copy users, rate and convert to games, rate and convert .js Again, here we go, we've got games. Um, now, gotta be careful. Um, so for my testing, I'm gonna be doing updates on the backup. And then when I'm ready to say I've got it correct, and I do the backups on the actual um, record. Um, so, there we go. Um, I know that's completely incorrect because I know here's what this actually looks like on the record or on the document. Sorry. So those are the things that need to be updated. Just do these one at a time. Um, oh, Twitch has issues at the moment. Did not know that. Or it didn't matter if we stored the deviation or the full rating in incident. Um, try this just from scratch. White 
would go it's going to be um, it's going to have these three attributes an R an RD of 350 and a volatility of 0 0.06 and this R is going to be game dot ratings dot white and then if I want black quick go uh, we do this with black and then here we set ratings is equal to uh, white w quick go to do this more compactly. In fact, here we go. Bar click go is equal to white. White click go. Um, black. Black click go. And that should do it. Again, I'm doing this on the backup copy. Um, Feel free to change the document structure to something more efficient. Yeah, uh, beats me. <laughs> I think it's fine. Uh, I'd rather do this all with a relational database. Anywho, but whatever. Oh, nice. Well, that looks fancy. Um, or rather. I'm just commenting on that. It looks like progress, um, I guess. Oh, I'm sorry. Co recursion. I'm, what's confusing me here is that both of your usernames, Mr. Corrupt and Co recursion, are both the same width on my screen and the same color and is a dark color. Uh, so it's kind of blending in. Yeah, so as for that, the way it's presented right now, we'll say that it's intentional and that it's going to be better. Don't worry, it'll all be okay. Um, uh, so let me try this. So we're going to say Mongo Relay Chess. Um, Let's see, games backup. Migrated 158 games. Games rating convert. Hmm. G dot ratings is undefined. Okay, so. Oh. Is it possible for there to be a record that does not have game G dot ratings defined? How do I even go look for that? I'm so confused again. <laughs> okay. Um, how do I print out? I can just do like print G, right? Okay, that didn't work. Why can't I do that? Why does that not print? That's weird. Why does print not print? Fail to load. G dot ratings is undefined. Wait, is it telling me that that query took place even before we get this line of code? I mean, I would have expected print to execute first. Uh, can I say print g dot id? Is that going to tell me anything whatsoever? I 
don't know. Okay. I mean, game two has got to be a collection by now. Dude, you know what the great part of selling it would be? Great part is that if you go here on GitHub, Greatest part is if anybody were to sell this, rather if I were to sell it, it's MIT license, right? So the MIT license says pretty much you have permission free of charge to do what you want with this. So even if this were sold, um, somebody could just send me a copy of my own source code and I would have it again and have this license to do with it what I want. Now, I don't know to what extent this could ever be invalidated, but I'm just saying, like, if somebody were to actually sell the software, um, the software could still live on at the website it's currently at. So there's not much point in purchasing an open source project unless you really want the developers. If you want those developers, then you buy them up. Um, it's, oh, result.ratings and result.preratings. Okay. That's what I'm struggling with. So my whole thing about printing the ID was just nonsense there. After property ID, I'm like 13 column 48. Column 48. Uh, so something about this is wrong still. So, um, Collection.update says so attribute result.ratings equal to Glico. That looks valid to me. Unless you're telling me that I can't do a nested select like that, I guess. You know, support packages or software as a service where they have to, where they have the infrastructure to host their software on a larger scale. Um, yeah. Yeah, if you've got that kind of scaling, um, that's a good position, or it's useful for you to leverage your position like that. Um, Let's see. So how do I do? Um, deal with that later. And I can say uh, what do I want to say here. What is it I'm looking for? I'm looking for um, Mongo update nested value. How do you do it? Use the dot notation. Uh, quotes. Quotes are important. Because otherwise the JavaScript eats um, your expression. Okay. I knew that. Not really. Um, okay, so then we are going to execute the backup again. Because why not? And then we're going to execute the conversion. It's converted. Mongo relay chess um, db.games.find. And we see that rating or result now contains. Um, hang on. 
man. Okay, here's a result. Result contains an attribute called result. And then it's got the winner, then the pre-ratings, and then uh, ratings afterward. Um, oh, because I looked on the wrong collection. That's why. Okay, so yeah, now ratings have R, RD, and um, VOL volatility. So now pre ratings. Pre ratings have got to get updated too. Um, so, same deal. Um, sure, why not? Copy five lines of code, paste five lines of code. Um, and before I do that, click go white, click go black, click go white. I've got to come up with better variable names. Um, unless I want to call the other thing pre w glico and pre, I mean that's probably fine. It's probably okay. Yeah. Let's undo all the changes. We're gonna call these things pre w glico, pre d glico, pre glico, and it's gonna be pre ratings. Um, go to that. Pre ratings here, pre ratings here. And I think that's that. Oh, nope, nope, nope. Good enough. Gets the job done. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I just. There's only so much I can do. <laughs> we live. Uh, that's okay. It's difficult to produce perfect software. But yeah, when you're dealing with a database that's not I don't know, it's an SQL or a relational database. These things pop out at you a lot more. Um, when you're doing it with this kind of database, um, the NoSQL database, it's really easy to lose sight of the details. Um, that's okay. I'm not sure what else you'd have called it anyhow. Yeah. I think this has gone really well overall. Absolutely. Um, I'd have to peek at what Leech us did. Um... Well, I think they had a different denormalization anyhow. Um, and yeah, working with no SQL helps you prototype these things more quickly. That said, I'd not at all be opposed to having a backing store, which is, um, which is based on Oops, what have I messed up? Separate thing. Okay. Okay, I knew that. Uh, just set it like 
that. It's okay. Um, well, but yeah, I would not be opposed to having a backing store, which would be um, an SQL sort of database. Uh, G.pre ratings is undefined. Okay, so I'm going to scroll up. It's possible that. Wait, where is this? Oh, wait, no. Pre ratings is an attribute of result. Okay. Uh, my bad. Okay. Game result for pre ratings. Um, that should be okay, I think. Let's try that again. Okay. So let me try Mongo Relay Chess Games Two dot find db dot games two dot find so oh is that it? all the wonder why it scolded me down like that anywho um let's see a result does have an attribute pre ratings and that seems to always be the case um So what am I missing? I'm so confused. Also, upon which line of code is the problem happening? Um, it's on line 8, column 21, happening from Line six, column one. Um, so line eight is here, column twenty-one. Yeah, so it's trying to do an assignment um, based on a non-existent value, apparently. And I don't know why that doesn't exist. I don't know how to select where something does not exist in a document. Um, okay, we're going to learn this. MongoDB, find, oh, capitalization. Oh, is it pre-capital rating? This is why I should always use copy and paste. Um, yeah, that's exactly it. So copy and paste to that. I never would have guessed that, but you're absolutely right. Um, cool. So we're going to do backup again. Try in-place conversion. And take a look at the in-place conversion results. DD games 2find so yeah, now we've got pre-ratings that have three aspects, as well as ratings that have three. Cool. Um, so I'm going to do the backup again. And then uh, we're going to change this to operate on the main game collection. And do it live. Here we go. Okay. Ratings and pre ratings of games have been converted. Um, now, the other part that's going to go with that um, is find the part of the code that handles that. Oh. Um, 
um, let's see, rating white and rating black are okay. So that'll get updated next time a game occurs. That's good. Ratings is equal to adjusted ratings. Um, did I get that right? I think so. Oh wait, adjusted ratings here needs to be this expression. Uh, so copy. Place with that. Um, let's see. Uh, there we go. Oops, my comments aren't following the coding style, so let me fix that. And let me bounce the server again. Hopefully nobody's playing a game. Uh, okay. That's everything that's necessary for the conversion. Unless there's some other ratings in some other table that I also need to convert. <laughs> um, probably not. Um, yeah, so here I just did some wizardry with the whole pre ratings and ratings. Um, let's see. Suppose before committing and publishing to GitHub, that should probably do a game. Although it might not work. So, I don't know. Either way, this is progress. Um, let's see, new ratings is equal to that calculated stuff here. Um, So then we do the adjustment. Um, that's fine. I mean, this comment doesn't really explain anything at all, so that comment doesn't shouldn't be there. Um, I don't know if semicolons are necessary or not. Um, but in the off chance that it is necessary and does impact functionality somehow, gotta balance things once more. Uh, so, have I forgotten anything? I don't think so. That's pretty cool. Um, result of pre ratings is equal to rating white and rating black. Um, am I using rating white and. Yeah, I'm using that all over the place, so never mind. I was going to say, can I optimize this somehow? Is, it, is this somehow ridiculously redundant? It is not. It is not at all redundant, and there's not much room for optimization. Um, I just feel silly bouncing the server over something as simple as a formatting change, but whatever. Okay, and then we add that. Get the status, we haven't left anything out. Fresh. Okay, I'm logged in. And go over here. 
and log in again. And the Battle of Wisk commences. Okay, and accept my own seat. Verify that refold repetition still works because I don't feel like playing a full game against myself. And because Frog Fuchsia has been giving me so many rating points so kindly. So it's time to give a few back. Whoops. Okay, there's the draw. So now if I scroll to the right, I can see NAN for this is the rating difference, but whatever. Um, see that we were 1530 and 1611, or we are, I don't know. Check the server log just to make sure things didn't go bump in the night. Uh, whoops. Game ended. Um, actually, here's how we find out what happened there, what transpired. Because I don't feel like checking any kind of MongoDB logs, and I don't think there are any anyway. Um, db.games.find, where, well, let's first see what the structure of that looks like db.games.find subject to the constraint that um, uh, weight is that player. Okay. So yeah, we've only played a handful of games. Um have I forgotten anything? Oh, I, I've got the game ID on hand. Why well, don't I search for the ID? Where the ID is equal to 12287AA. Okay. So we see that the pre-ratings are white at 1530. Post-rating is white at 1555. So the calculation, we're assuming that that's correct. Because it's more convenient for us if that is correct. Uh, now, Frogfuchus is just me on a separate screen here. So, that all said, um, I think I can publish these changes. It's going to break the UI. The UI can be fixed, but the data are correct. Um, Click go to, I uh, think, like this. Oh, um, and convert and perform. And what do we say? And put in place. Add conversion. Let's see, add backup in conversion scripts. Get push origin master. Anyone can use the change. Cool. 
so I'm no expert on the UI stuff, but the data is where it needs to be, or they are where they need to be. Um, yeah, again, for those unfamiliar, um, let's see, the library I'm using is called Clicko2 Lite. So you get to install that library using your standard installation tools. Um, and you get to go over here, I guess, and you can see here's the source code for it and the rationalization for coming up with this library. Despite the fact there's already a library called Glico2.js that does perform Glico rating or Glico2 rating. This is just the version that does one thing and one thing only, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know. It just performs a Glico2 rating calculation. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's really all we need to know. So yeah, the goal is just to provide not as many conveniences, but just get the program to run quickly and efficiently. Ah, so what I was hacking is over here, we got a relay chest server and this is just my copy of it. Um, so this is a game server that allows people to play a very special kind of chess that has some very special rules. Those rules are over here. The official rules of relay chess. Um, so the pieces can move like a normal. Say, like you have um, a queen protecting a knight, that knight can now move like a queen or can move like a knight. If you got a bishop protecting a rook, the rook can move like a rook or can move like a bishop. Um, it's not transitive, it's just a one off relay. Um, so like the fact that in the starting position you have your rook in the corner protecting your knight and then it's adjacent to a bishop doesn't confer that power onto the bishop that sort of thing um however pawns don't get the special power so this is just a special kind of chess um and uh what i was doing was hacking it so that it's performing the modern rating calculation um, using a formula called Glico2. Um, so uh, you can read a ton about this. Um, I don't need this. Yeah, here's the whole, here's the math. Um, but basic concept behind Glico 2 is that um, a person, well, there's multiple rating systems out there. So first of all, there was AirPad ELO's rating system, which is still quite popular today, um, which tries to accurately account for who's going to, or tries to um, measure performance in a way that can be predictive. Um, <laughs> so I'm trying not to get too deep into the details here, but basically there, after Elo came up with a, his way of performing rating, um, Mark Glickman, a professor of Boston University, came up with a way of performing rating, um, or rating your performance that, uh, accounted for the fact that over time your performance is going to decay a bit. And, well, no, I'm sorry. That wasn't what he first did. We first did is kind of for um, some people have played more games than others, so we're more sure about how strong they are. Or we have more certainty about their performance based on their game history. So he did a whole bunch of math. And then he added this, the Glico 2 system, the extension of Glico, that said, you know, over time, players' performances are going to decay and or vary. Um, and that variability can also be measured. 
on a player by player basis. So you can have a player who you don't know much about and you could have a reason that you know that their performance varies a lot or you could just be really uncertain because you just haven't seen them play a lot of games yet. Um, so I replaced the rating part of this code with the more modern Glico 2 rating library. Um, in part because that's something we, that we always want to do. In part because I think people are curious like how strong they are. Um, I think this may help in some way um, just players become comfortable with the site. That they can see how strong they are and um, see just um, what their rating estimate is. Oh, I learned to code. I started back on that back in junior high of all things. Um, so I just, um, there was a class where I got to do an independent project on any subject. And I figured, you know, this seems like something that's kind of relevant these days and seems kind of interesting. And I'm curious what useful things or creative things could be achieved by it. Um, so, I mean, yeah, some people study, study art or history or music and all kinds of things. I'm not saying I don't study those all, but um, I took more of a interest in what sorts of things can be achieved by way of um, using a computer. Also, just side note, I hope I got this right. I really do. My goodness, wouldn't that be embarrassing if, like, um, both players' ratings went up or down at the same time? I think I got it right. But man, if that's wrong, that's going to be a minor detail that has to be fixed. <laughs> Uh, just imagine when white wins, both players' ratings increase. When black wins, both players' ratings decrease. Just imagine that. Okay. So be it. Um, so. Uh, da, da, da. Um. <laughs> That's an interesting perspective there. That's like saying that school should teach everybody, well, any number of things that could not be perceived as relevant. Um, like school should teach every child how to learn how to write in cursive. Or teach them to write in cursive. Because everybody's been writing in cursive forever. Um, or educated people tend to write in that. I don't know. Or it's like saying that students should study history because it's important to know X, Y, and Z. Or it's, it's like saying they have to study history, but they have to focus on these particular subjects when they do said studying. Um, I don't think coding itself is the answer. A lot of people say that everybody should learn to code. Um, not saying that everybody says that, but many people say that. Yeah, I don't think that even coding, like the actual writing of code is the least interesting part of what you can achieve with a computer. It's the least theoretical thing, it's the most concrete visual thing that allows you to see what got done. But actual code, most of the time, is just awful. You don't want to see it. You don't want to have anything to do with it. You're not going to learn anything from having done it. Most of the time. Um, what is interesting is like the theory of what computers can do. Um, I find that far more interesting than what how you actually code things with a computer. Um, just dealing with things at more abstract, higher level is a lot cooler.
But yeah, if you're going to teach one thing that's not taught in American schools these days, it should probably be statistics. Uh, I don't know that everybody's got an aptitude for coding. I don't know that everybody has an aptitude for statistics. But my goodness, uh, statistics are relevant these days. Um, I mean, you hear statistic thrown around in political circles. You hear it thrown around um, anytime you have to do anything with money. Yeah, I've studied statistics both in high school and then taking AP statistics. And then back in college, I ended up studying it again because they wouldn't take my AP credits because, ooh, statistics for engineers is something different than statistics back in high school. Um, or different than AB statistics, and we're not going to give you your credit. Um, or we'll give you credit for statistics, but not for an engineer. There's a different kind of statistics class that you get credit for. Um, so I ended up studying it twice. Um, second time around, it wasn't quite as fun. Although we got to do some more stuff involving calculus, so... I mean, okay. Maybe they were right. Maybe I had to take it twice just to see all the calculus in action. But, yeah. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Um, anyhow, this is the library. I've used that library. I don't need this open anymore. Here's the description of Glippo. Um, Okay, so I just have these three tabs open. So it's kind of funny how these um, get presented currently. In some ways, I am, um, I don't know, I'm either looking for an opponent or stalling for time and seeing how quickly the UI gets updated, although it'd be kind of crazy to think that all the UI problems I just introduced could be suddenly fixed. Let me think of what next I can move on to, to improve this site. Because, um, yeah, I was just looking this morning and seeing, like, gosh, is there anything I can do to improve this? Um, so switching in the whole new ratings formulas. <laughs> Almost done, Kappa, he says. Yeah. I mean, I cause all kinds of problems. Uh, yeah, I mean, and here Mr. Krupp is saying, look at all this cool stuff we can do in code. He's probably right. Just go to sleep. The software gnomes will fix it. Um, but yeah, I've caused all kinds of problems with that. Um, is this my website? Actually, you mentioned typography. This makes me think there's like some um, stylistic and other things I can worry about too. Um, it's stuff I might be able to help with in some regards, although it looks quite nice as it is. Um, but yeah, I'm a developer of this site, as is Mr. Corrupted. He's probably more in charge of this than I am. Um, but, you know, I'm able to make some functional parts function, um, not so great with the UI. Although lately I did do one thing. I could probably show this off since I've got the time to do it. Uh, where did I put this? Um, well, this is going to look ugly for a second, so bear with me. Got windows inside windows but yeah the other day um, I was doing some profiling here and just hitting all the buttons hit this button hit that button hit all the buttons hit all the checkboxes you know just figuring out what can I learn from this I stumbled upon this and I thought gosh this might actually look useful and let's figure out like what can we do to improve the server performance and so I say I want to reload the page and look at all this info we got. 
So, um, yesterday, this had like 40 errors um, because I didn't have my web server configured properly. Um, now all this is just caused mostly by my extension in my browser. This all has to do with the ghostery to block ads and block malware and stuff. Um, yeah, I was really impressed once I understood what the heck this is. Um, and then, yeah, it says, by the way, if you really want to improve performance, you got these style sheets out there. You've got these JavaScript files out there. If you want to improve performance, um, you really ought to uh, do all this combining stuff. And like, yeah, whatever. So now that the clients are caching these files, um, combining them into as few files as possible really isn't a big problem. Where this is usually a problem is if a client has to load multiple files from the server. The server says, okay, I'll give you them one at a time. Here's a file. Okay, we're done. Okay, you want the next file? Okay, here it is. Okay, how far along are we? Oh, we're done? Oh, do you want the next file? As opposed to, here, let me just send you one file containing everything. This is what um, this is talking about here. But the client has all these files cached, so this isn't going to affect anything. Uh, ditto for this JavaScript. It's not going to be a big concern. I'm really not worried about it, because um, that can be cached. Um, yesterday there was a lot of caching that was not going on. That's been fixed. And so now in terms of, well, okay, so this is what slows down just the page load. Um, it could take, I mean, this is a huge factor in general when you're not caching things. But that's all fixed. All these warnings here are just due to my extension to my browser. I'm not worried about that. Or this socket IO thing, which I presume can't be done anything about because that can't be cached. What do I know? I don't know very much, but... Oh, I'm sorry, this is cached, but it updates frequently. So maybe it updates once every five minutes or so, and I really don't care. That's not going to be a huge penalty. Um, so now we have all the files, so there's no waiting minutes or seconds to minutes for things to load up there. Um, so now Chrome is saying, oh, by the way, you got all these styles, you're not using them all. But that's not really a huge problem either. Ah, should have used Notepad++, Zish. Notepad++. No, just kidding. Um, it's not like Swish just started coding yesterday. Or did he? Um, yeah, it's pointing out that, hey, look, we got all these cool styles and stuff we're not using. I mean, these are things that could potentially slow down uh, your browser if your computer sucks. Or if these files are just enormous. Um, but I don't think this is a big problem. Uh, actually, why should I bother with what I think? Let's turn to the tools themselves and see just how wrong I am. Um, let's see, where do the tools tell us just how slow things are? I could go do this in timeline, which would show how quick, or show the duration under which something completed. Or I could actually profile how much CPU is utilized by JavaScript. Uh, yeah. Well, that's just JavaScript. That doesn't account for CSS. Um, nor does this. So I'm supposing there's probably no way to account for... Um, oh, what's this? I'm just hitting all the buttons and seeing if I'm learning anything. So we got base.css, 200 OK, 12 milliseconds in latency. Um, wait, time versus latency.
I guess this is talking about when I... Huh. Is there any way I could just say rerun the test and refresh the page? Anyway. Yeah, for me to load all these files from my web server was pretty quick. Um, Socket.io is actually the slowest running thing of all of this. That's cool how it breaks that down too. That's really nice visualization. I'm really starting to like this here. Um, the DNS lookup, the initial connection, SSL. So that all totaled to one tenth of a second. Or maybe two tenths. It's halfway between one and two. Um, and most of that was spent in the DNS lookup trying to find um, cdn.socket.io. Um, Again, this is probably a cached file that doesn't get loaded very often, so waiting for this JavaScript is probably not the biggest concern in the world. Um, got all these images and stuff. Uh, whoa, what is this thing? Got a WebSocket pending, you know, just for lols. I don't know why that's... Oh, switching protocols pending. How do we know that that's completed? <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, overall you could see like stuff completed pretty quickly. Um, wait, how do we see the full timeline of this page load? I mean, I'm assuming that this is when the initial page load was done at yeah, two tenths of a second. Um, I think the other day it was taking like upwards of half a second to a second to load because it was reloading all the JavaScripts and all the CSS files and everything. Um, and that was just a lot of content. Oh, CSS. Okay, you can actually filter this and CSS is a thing that's filterable by. Um, but yeah, like I was explaining earlier, most of the time in obtaining the file isn't actually in the transfer itself, but just in waiting um, and queuing up multiple requests and getting individual things, or individual requests. Socket IO switches protocols um, dynamically going from long polling to actual web sockets. Oh. Okay. Huh. I wonder why that's still pending then. I could have sworn that on my server I did set up um, the reverse proxy server to forward to the app server using actual web sockets, but maybe I didn't do it right. Whatever. Either way, it's pending. Um, oh, but wait, no, this is a web socket. So this is waiting for the server to send some kind of notification. That's cool. Um, that makes sense. Um, oh, right. And the other day I was trying to profile this uh, chess.js stuff and play controller. I forget where I left off. I was trying to find, like, is there any way I can make this even more efficient than it already is? Um, here. Let me try that again. So, we're going to uh, first unmaximize that. Record uh, JavaScript CPU profile. Refresh the page. Stop and see where was all our CPU time spent in that four seconds I was recording. Um, most of it's in the third-party libraries, so that suggests that our own code doesn't completely suck. Usually it's your own code that has some deficiency. Like You're not going to find 
any deficiencies in third-party libraries, if the library's any good. Like, either a library's going to be awesome, or it's going to suck. And there's not really much in between. Um, and, okay, yeah, there are some libraries that perform poorly, but have all kinds of features. And, I mean, but you're not going to find, well, I don't know. For every one of those, you're going to find one that has the features you need that performs the way you need it to perform in general. Otherwise, you're stuck making your own, which sucks. But sometimes you have to do that, but not often. Anywho, so saying how all of these um, function calls, at least on the index page, um, all this JavaScript utilization is not sourced inside um, our own code, but is sourced inside uh, the third-party library, which means that we haven't done anything stupidly wrong here. Um, so the other thing I can do is profile once we've got a game in progress. Um, so let me clear this profile. Don't need that one and we start a game um yeah i mean sure r plus or minus twice rd feel free to round that wherever you feel is most convenient probably to integer um because realistically humans aren't going to understand the difference um between i don't know but yeah i would probably just do whatever is most convenient um, it's an estimate it's a 95% confidence interval and if it's off by half a decimal place or something then um, then maybe it's a 94% confidence interval instead of a 95% confidence interval but yeah just do whatever's convenient and what's nice um, so you could probably just have an integer number plus or minus another integer um, probably looks pretty nice, but I don't know. Or if you think that something else looks cooler, by all means. <laughs> Oops, didn't mean to do that. Here we go. Um, so let me start the game. Here's my other account. Going back to the lobby. Ding! Oh man, the other guy always gets white. I'm just kidding, but it's all random. Um, I wonder, I haven't thought much about this. about that that makes my head spin but that perpetual occurred under that condition I'm trying to think why didn't that occur in any of those other positions with the king on, with either king on their home rank I think I know the reason and I think that the FIDE rules of FIDE laws of chess are actually ambiguous on this point. Um, so here they got the rules explaining when does a draw happen. So the game may be drawn if an identical position is about to appear or has appeared on the chessboard at least three times. See article 9.2. Okay, so we're going to see Article 9.2. The game is drawn. Let me zoom in. Man, here we go. The game is drawn upon a correct claim, which right now the server is making for the player. The player should actually technically be hitting the draw button if there were a draw button. But usually if you're repeating moves, you want the draw anyway. Or at least one of the two players wants it. So, the game is drawn upon a correct claim of a player having the move 
when the same position for at least a third time either is about to appear if the player first writes his move and then declares the draw and tells the arbiter about it or if the third repetition of position has appeared on the board and the player whose turn it is to move claims the draw. Positions are considered the same if and only if the same player has the move, pieces of the same kind and color occupy the same squares, and the possible moves of all the pieces of both players are the same. Thus, positions are not the same if at the start of a sequence a pawn could have been captured off a saw. Oh, they actually do expound upon this. 9.2.2. A king or rook had a castling right, but forfeited such a castling right after moving. The rights are only lost after the king or rook is moved. Interesting. This in particular is stupid, um, but it's the rule. <laughs> What this is saying is that if a player is in check, well, okay, I could see why they did it this way. Yeah, they're saying if the player's in check and their only option is to move their king, that the castling right is uh, lost after the king is moved. Or, um, let me think. Yeah, so it's saying that if you put a player in check, and they have to move um, the king, that the castling right is not yet lost at the time the king has started to move. Um, so threefold repetition, and I don't know that I agree with that, but, but what would confuse that issue is to say that, that a player had an option to move a king or an option to block a check or to capture the checking piece. Um, and so it's saying that you know, that situation would be handled the same way as if the player um, his only option were to move the king. Oh, awesome. Committed. Very nicely done. All right, get full origin master. Uh, Okay. Committed. Get log. Oh, you're talking about your side. Yeah, let me try it there. I guess. Um, so. Oops, my bad. That's my bad. Try pulling the change again. Um, okay. So I'm curious when you say committed. Um, well, let me just see if I can see the effects here. So if I refresh, if I control refresh, control shift R. Oh, okay, try again. Get pull. Yeah. I'm just going to assume that GitHub was a bit slow there. Cool. Uh, get status. Everything merged properly. Um, OS. We're going to stop. Even though this probably is not necessary, but it might be, so. Okay, server is running. Refresh. Nice! And then go over here, back to the lobby. And refresh over there. Yes, yeah, so if you do a control refresh, um, it'll reload all the assets. And we get to see, um, that's pretty cool. Nice. Um, so, if I put a new game seek out there, 10-2, 
eh, whatever. But I'm sure um, it's not such a big deal. Uh, I'm probably just miscaching something on my side. Um, either way, I really like this display. It looks nice. Uh, let's see, yeah, let me try accepting this. And yeah, everything looks as it should over here. That's great. That's awesome. Um, okay, I hear the move sounds, which is good. Um, Thankfully, castling rights don't play much of a role in threefold repetition claims. Nice. Really cool. Very nice. Yeah, you can spectate the games. It's. Um, I thought that was going to be one of the features that really helped um, get the critical mass to get the site going. Um, so, I think that's a really cool feature to have. Um, I was less convinced about the whole Glico thing, but I figured that that's at least a way I can um, keep up with it. Uh, let me peek. Maybe I can somehow figure it out. Um, So, I mean, you probably did the same sort of display thing here um, as was done for users. Yeah, so you're saying user rating as click O2. It's probably a server thing. Uh, I could bounce the server again. Yeah, so yeah, it's probably, either way, it's not a mistake in the code here, probably not. Um, user here comes from what scope? Where are we getting user from? Um, let me try something. Let me try something completely dumb and see what it does. Okay, I fixed it. I replaced the word user with the word seek. And that appears to have fixed it. So I'm going to commit that change. No, I mean, I do stupid things all the time. Get commit amend commit message because I like your commit message better. Um, display seek click to properly. Okay, get push origin master. Cool. Open. Don't need the FIDE rules open because we know the FIDE rules. Nice. So, yeah. yeah. I like the way this is formatted too.
probably don't need my alt account logged in there. Um, so that's cool. Oops, that was the Discord thing. Okay, well, so, you know, you're able to profile the JavaScript to check its performance. Although, honestly, I've done this before in the JavaScript for um, the actual gameplay. It has no real performance issues to speak of. Um, at least as far as I'm aware, it's, it's pretty fast. There might be ways to make it even faster, but by and far, what improves performance of a site um, is first of all, like how far you have to can uh, go to obtain said files or resources, or somehow communicate with the server. Um, so, like, there's a saying or an, a rule of thumb multiply the estimate by a power of 10 each time you have to go an additional um, uh, additional hop to get a piece of information. So the fastest access to information is in um, <coughs> pardon me the fastest access to information is inside the CPU register itself then CPU has caches um, each time they go from like the register to level one cache, to level two cache, to maybe a level three cache that's about 10 times slower. And then you have to go from cache to onboard memory that's about 10 times slower. And then from there to maybe your memory, um, I'm sorry, from there to your uh, storage your storage might have some caching in it too but yeah if you're going from your ram to your uh, hard drive disk ram uh, that's another power of 10 and then to go actually find something on a disk is another power of 10 and then we have to go outside your computer uh, onto your local network that's another power of 10 you have to um, make some hops to go across the nation um, each hop is adding some additional latency. So basically, what's going to impact performance of your drag and drop and pre move and um, responsiveness of the server and all that is usually uh, having to do most with um, how far your computer is from the server and in terms of how quick. The connection is and performance has very little to do with um, how fast the JavaScript is that runs um, the actual game on your PC or mobile device or so forth so uh, let me see if I can find a better explanation of that computer science power of time uh, nope 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 uh, sweet power of 10. Pure performance by powers of magnitude. Um, Moore's Law. That's not what I was looking for either, but um, that's kind of cool too. But yeah, in, at least in theory, the further you have to go to communicate with something um, or to obtain or um, send information. Uh, the slower it is. Oh, time space, timestamp-based lag compensation. Um, it's a good question. I think we could survive the launch without it. I think ultimately that would be a nice thing to have, but I think it's um, yeah. I mean, people would enjoy it but i think in terms of features that people are actually looking for i'd be surprised uh the site's actually pretty fast to begin with i didn't mean to harp so much on that at all i mean 
people would say be useful for like a bullet no increment time control and that would be accurate but uh, if you're playing uh, yeah even leech us um, well I'm curious uh, what's broken about the lag compensation there like how can you do better than what leech us did it's a really difficult problem um oh okay you know i, I know what, i think i know what you're talking about it's broken in the regard that if you're on your last few seconds and you submit a move and the server doesn't get it before your time runs out you're not compensated for your lag um yeah honestly if somebody has more than one second lag something's pretty weird um yeah I think ultimately people will want that i think um I, I think something that might be more useful or interesting would be game history um but you're maybe you're right maybe people don't care about look at here's all the games that got played today or something like that maybe they do care a lot more about lag compensation the more i think about this you're probably right but man i don't know how you solve that problem that's a hard thing to solve um I happen to know or be familiar with how it was done on fix and they use time seal and all that it's possible to even crack time seal i accidentally did so once and got in a lot of trouble with the admins for it and i'm like guys i'm making a new interface i'm trying to fix this damn time seal thing on my interface help me out here <laughs> almost got banned for it it was great um yeah no that I've got source code in Java that implements time seal. It's doable, but I don't know how well that's going to play with all the rest of the pieces here. Like, how do you write the server code that does it? And how do you write this in JavaScript in a way that people aren't going to hack it? I don't know. It's tricky. Um. Actually, yeah, they're having that explanation of how it works is useful. <laughs> how to cheat at chess. Security anal analysis. Oh, man, I'm tired. Of the Internet Chess Club. How to cheat chess. Security analysis of, at the Internet Chess Club. Or of the Internet Chess Club. Um, how to cheat. Introduction. Blah, 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 blah. TCPIP, security analysis of ICC overview, uh, just playing computers. Um, when they want to extend their membership, they have three options give credit card online, give it via email, telephone, or fax, give it by personal check or postal money. Um, oh, they show that the encryption mechanism is flawed. Oh, that's okay. They have a cheating timestamp client. Yeah. Reverse engineering the cheating client took about 65 hours of work. Um, cryptanalysis. <laughs> okay, so that's interesting. Wow. Um, yeah, but no, there's like open time seal or whatever it's called. It's, it's doable, but I just don't know on top of these other layers, like I've got the reverse proxy server and um, we've got the Node.js server. Um, I don't know how well all that plays over in just a plain old 
HTTP connection and or web sockets and or multiple browsers. And I'm sure it's something people can be happy with the site um, even before time seals complete uh, or implemented or whatever lag compensation you want to implement um, or we want to implement. Um, honestly, I wonder how bad it would be uh, to have some sort of lag compensation that just takes your average lag and just adds that to your clock each move. It would be the weirdest experience for sure. Uh, again, yeah, that's what time seal and other things are for, it's for measuring lag. Um, but it's a lot harder to cheat the system. Um, as they did with ICC, they found some ways to hack it, but, but yeah, it's a lot harder to hack it over an average sort of scale like that. But I don't know, in my opinion, a game with an increment is way more interesting anyhow. I'm trying to think of what else might help to make this like the site people want to go to. Being able to spectate active games is awesome as long as there are active games, but there aren't. But, uh, but yeah, I think people just learning the game will really appreciate the spectate feature. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. It's great that we have this Discord, but in order for people to actually use it, they have to log in and say logged in and stuff and it requires clicking away from the site one thing i might see if there's some way to add would be some sort of um, um that's another good point about anonymous games um i'm sure zug is yeah he's probably portaled yeah he's probably portaled to i don't know He's got to be tired. I'm surprised um, he even showed up in my stream after uh, that portal excursion. Uh, um, oh, that's an interesting proposition there. <laughs> uh, Man, I'm so behind on all the Steam games. It's it's really sad. Um, it's funny though. Like if ever I were to devote the time to that, um, I'd probably spend most of the time coming up with creative ways to kill my teammate. Not gonna lie. I mean, what's the fun in actually solving the puzzles? I'm trying to remember. There was another game. It was a game that was questionably cooperative or competitive. Um, oh, yeah. Super Mario Bros. Wii U, whatever it's called. It's just basically Mario on a 2E plane um, with the whole bunch of... Oh, I'm sorry, this is not for... I don't remember what platform it was. It was the cool four-player Mario game that everybody was all hyped about. Yeah, I'd be more efficient at killing you. That That's true. Um, um, so, let's see. Um... What was I going to say, though? Oh, yeah. So, some people have a propensity to um, collect items in that game and deny them to other people. Um, oh, I remember. So, that game itself wasn't too hard. Somebody came up with a mod for that Wii Mario Brothers whatever it was game. Um... Yeah, 
and we were playing the modded version where all the levels are like Kaizo, ridiculously super challenging. And even so, uh, I just remember I got to drop kick one of the. I, think I was playing Mario and got to drop kick Luigi into a bottomless pit that he was just like standing right next to. Just ground pound and kicked him in. It was it was beautiful. Didn't even see it coming. He's just like he's even sitting right there. And he was just so agitated afterward. Like I don't know, he just completely set himself up to get drop kicked into a hole. It was it was fantastic. Uh, so that was my way of getting back at him for hoarding items. And we still managed to make our way through most of the Kaiser levels, even with that sort of stuff. I mean, goodness, like, you know that, like, when I'm playing normal chess, I am, even there, somewhat of a troll. And that's a game where you're supposed to be, um, I don't know, competing or competitive. Like, you've seen, when I'm playing Blit, or when, sometimes even in Blitz, I'll play the most esoteric nonsense there. Yeah, I'm that guy. I mean, that. what's the point in beating the game the way it's meant to be beaten? Where's the fun in that? I mean, okay, maybe if you had a legit interesting challenge... I could lay off on the trolling, but I don't think, even for the portal things, I can't imagine it being that creative. Um, or at least I imagine that killing your partner is more creative than anything else you can do. Um, so yeah, let me see. I'm trying to remember how far off am I from even being in a position to consider trying to do anything engine-wise with this. It should be just nuts. I'm sure anybody else could come up with a bot better than I could at this point, because doing it in stock has just got to be painful. Um, there's all kinds of bots out there other than Stockfish, which could be capable of being extended for this. Doing it in Stockfish would be a total pain, but I have other things I have lined up to get done Stockfish first. So I can't even get to that here. Plus, even if I could get it working, it would just, you would not want to play against it. <laughs> it would be mean. Um, so, yeah, let me see. Community coming soon. Trying to think, of what else did I do to contribute to this in some sort of positive way? Um, is there anything else that really dumps out at me as needing to be done? Um, oh, hey, look! I found the word to do in the code. Fantastic. Um, could rewrite it in Elm. Yeah, there's a lot of things I could rewrite it in. Um, oops, hang on. Um, update player ratings. Okay. Probably fine commentary. So that was one to do I got to take out of the code because that's now done. Um, how about that pun? Uh, API stuff, fun. <laughs> okay. Uh, what else? Check time, increment, variation support. Anonymous users. 
Oh, there's all that stuff in node modules, which I can just ignore because that's not my code. At least I don't think it is. Yeah, I don't know. It's so easy to sign up. And anonymous users can't have ratings, and you know, we just did the whole rating thing. Now we have to redo it for anonymous people. Or at least ensure that those games don't get rated. But, let me think. I think the greatest challenge there... Oh, I know what would be useful. <clears throat> so, inevitably, there will be the potential that a game gets finished and then you want to look over the game. Currently, there's no way to do that. Unless you happen to have access to the database. We we'll do Mongo Relay Chess. And you could do db at games.find. And then you could go look through all these games and see if you could find it. No, just kidding. You'd look it up by its ID. And you would get um, the position, you would get the PGN, and then you would reconstruct the game and so forth. Oh, I know something that actually be more useful. Um, yeah, game history and analysis is a big one. Um, I'm sorry, there's something much simpler that would be useful. Um, oh man. Hang on. Let me check one thing here. Mongo Regis. Show collections. Oh, I forgot. The way they do this is kind of ridiculous. Um, db.game 4.find, db.game 5.find. Yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot they compress their games. Um, that doesn't help. Uh, analysis 2find Hmm. I was going to say the way that we're persisting um, moves could be challenging for one thing in particular, and that thing in particular would be takebacks. Um, takebacks and... I don't know. You're never really going to have a draw offer in this game. I mean, sure, we'll get around to implementing that sometime, but... Um, more realistically, I don't know, takebacks aren't going to happen very often either. And once it's implemented, people aren't going to like it. Because <laughs> some people will offer takebacks and others won't, and they'll all be all mad about it. Um, but yeah, being able to replay through a game, if you've got the URL for it, would be kind of cool. I'm trying to think of what that would require. Um... A casting warning. Yeah. That'd be awesome. It'd prompt the user each time they make a move. Are you sure you want to make this move? You're probably going to lose the game. Are you sure? Just every time they move. Not just for castling. Just make it such a... If you're rating... I'm sorry. If you're provisional. Um, that you get warnings each time you make a move. Are you sure this is what you wanted to do? I don't know. Is that what you wanted? You sure? Just like, because why not? Um, uh, but yeah, here we've got the move list. Um, there should be the flip board button for when you want to like flip the table and let your opponent know that you're mad. Um, Let's see. So I'm kind of curious though. Um, so I do have some game URLs. Like, uh, what was it? 
I had that one game in particular I found. This one. The most recent game. So then I can go to my URL. Um, and I could type in the URL of that game and it brings me up to a blank board. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Or even better yet, just make it so that when they play King G1 or King C1, it automatically castles. And they didn't want it to castle. Or add an evaluation bar here. Now, granted, there's no engine. But just like keep track of players' ratings and keep track of the time on the clock and just fill in the evaluation bar based on some combination of like what's the player's rating, um, how much time's on the clock, and what pieces are left. Just randomly fill it in. Oh, it sends join game to the server. You could redirect them to analysis board. Hmm. But what do we do for spectators? I mean, Okay, I'm sorry. You're saying, you're saying you could create a new kind of board called the new kind of board and analysis board. I'm just wondering, like, I guess we do need a new analysis board to actually see either. I just don't understand. Like, here we go, leech us, right? So I go to TV. Here we got Racing Chess 74. I click on a finished game. This isn't an analysis board, is it? It is. Okay. Um. Hmm. I was going to swear that there was some way you could like click on a player and you would see... I don't know. Just don't know. There's somehow you can end up viewing a game that just finished and be able to see at least the final position of it. Um, Cause somebody who wants to see like a particular game might not know that it's done yet and might not be able to see the time on the clocks and all that stuff. Um, although, now that I think more about it, actually going back and forward through a game is a bit more challenging than I thought. So, maybe that isn't so simple after all. Um, I'm just trying to think, what might users... I guess... I guess time seal is something they want. Oh, goodness. Well, let's see. NPM time seal. Um, fix proxy, which pumps up traffic by sound. Like to play on fix. Under Linux with export, I'm not satisfied with the acoustic behavior. So sound fix is designated to sound the chest traffic between the fix and the fix client. Uh, okay. I don't understand what in the world that's about. But that's cool. Uh, I, was, I was just trying to find a time seal implementation. Okay, well that's interesting. Um, Uh, 
hell no. Unix timestamp. Tiny library to create, create and manipulate Unix timestamps in JavaScript. That's a helper library. It's not exactly what I'm looking for. Hang on. I didn't mean to go back twice. Monotonically increasing timestamp. <laughs> oh, that's great. Console.log timestamp. Five in a row. It's going to increase the value. Um, that is that's special. That's clever. All right, who came up with this and when? Like, how do you, how that idea even occur to you? Four years ago. To do synchronized network time. Yeah, that's not a problem at all. Nothing to worry about there. Okay, that's funny. Uh, here, let me go to this guy's GitHub and see what else he's done. Oh no! The source code is no longer available. I'm not surprised. Oh, did I just... I hit reload. Are you seriously saying that this page reloaded like instantly? When I just completely disconnected. Okay, what if I do control F5 to reload? I don't know, like is something weird going on with my internet? No. I'm just completely spellbound that this is instantaneous. There's like no way. Okay, let me try to just go to the base URL. The root directory. Yeah, okay, so it does load pretty fast. That's crazy. Amazing. Um, yeah, I don't know what else a player would want. Um, Oh, that's why I was going to go back to the code and see, like, what are all these to-do things. Um, hmm. It occurs to me that one thing I could consider trying, I can try to get this, would be a move list of some sort. Even if it's not navigable, it could still be a move list. It could still show what moves were played. Um, to actually get those moves, I mean, we're passing those moves to um, the server. Uh, we probably have them already, so that's a piece of functionality I could add, just so people could see where we came from. Um, at least I think we're passing them to the server. Uh, so yeah, let me, uh, let's see. Oh, right, I don't have the tab open with this right now, so I need to open one. I'm, well, let me refresh this. I'm actually not going to move here, but I'm uh, just more looking at the screen and seeing is there room for a list. I'm pretty sure there is. I think it would go above the abort game button. Um, right. 
For the move list, you could start by setting the PGN and setup gain instead of the FVN. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a dynamically building move list. It could be... Um, well, let me take a look at where setup gain is. This... Mint setup game. Yeah, so okay, that would be used if somebody. Oh yeah, we do have a move list. We have to be able to refresh the page and still see the move list. Point taken. So yeah, so setup game would have to emit the move list rather than the FBN. Um. I think ultimately where this is going to be going though is you're going to have a starting FEN and then a move list. Um, since we got FEN here already, I'm going to add an argument to pass the move list also. Assuming I've got it somewhere. If not, then I'll have to go get it. Um, Game.just.fen. Funny thing is, I've been through this before, and I know that there's a place to get the move list. Uh... Okay, so it's not here. It's actually here that we have to check, are we in threefold repetition? Um, so there's generate moves, which generates the moves of position. There's in threefold. Um, oh. Wait, so we got this thing called undo move. Uh, okay, so there's a thing called history. I don't know much about history. Don't know much biology, um, et cetera, et cetera. Wait, where are we here? BGN options. Pop all of history onto reversed history. Build the list of moves. Well, if that isn't confusing. I'm okay. I'm sure there's a reason for it. Not my library, I don't have to worry about it. Um, okay, so there's the function here called history, which returns the move history object. Um, so, what this means is that I can say in handle games. In this place where we're emitting this, um, and simultaneously elect to it moves or history. When I keep the name game dot chess dot history. Cool. So now we got the move list. Um, so that's redundant. That's okay, we can always turn that back later. Inevitably, it would be nice if there would be a way to return um, starting at the end as well as history, but whatever. Um, uh, okay. Um, what is this? This is called setup game. Okay, that's all that needs to be done from that side. And then we need to take a look at 
display controller. Um, curious just for a second about what Relay Chess Service does on a whole setup game event. Okay, just miss that to the play controller. Um, so. An argument for setting the fen um, would be that um, maybe it performs better to send the fen than to send um, all the moves. Um, just in terms of getting moves to execute, although that contradicts what I was saying earlier about performance and not really depending on CPU utilization. Um, Okay, okay. Um. Oh, ground is a chess ground. It's anything that can be called on a chess ground I can do. Um. So, yeah, when we're setting up a position. Chess is a new chess object. Oh, okay, I get the chess object. Um, right. This has no impact on the pieces moving around on the actual board. Um, wait. Can I set the history of a chess ground object? I don't think it has a history. No, it probably doesn't. Um, let me take a look at chess ground, though. I'm wondering. Hang on. Where is this all defined? Okay, that's where it's defined. Um, oh, var test equals function of fen. I get it. So if you wanted to initialize this based on a set of moves. You change this function. Um, and make it go through the history. I still wonder though. These don't need to be mutually exclusive. I could say var chess equals function fen comma history. And the way I'd have both the history list as well as the I guess the current position. Um, it'd be better if I could, like, I don't know. Oh, chess ground is only a snapshot of a position. Okay, so I'm completely off base with that assumption. That's cool. Good to know. Um, so, yeah, we have a load of FEN. We don't have a way to say, well, actually what I could do say FEN we're loading and then the moves to add on to it. Um, I'm 
And we could load a full, like, started from a position and then made all these moves and uh, validate everything as we're going along. Um, I don't know what that really gains us other than we get the history in this chess object. And the history could be introspected later. So that might be a useful thing to have. Um, oh man, that's going to burn through so many CPU cycles. <laughs> that's okay, I guess. Um, oh, there's load PG. Okay. Yeah, she takes a complete PGN and loads it. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, so. Let's see. Possible results index of move. So possible results. Oh, if okay, if the move, if the last move is a result. Define the result. Else, actually make the move. Um, so this would be the sort of loop to be added. Yeah, that's definitely crazy expensive. Um, but yeah, here. This is the sort of thing, like, if server were to send a move list, you could say, figure out what the move is from that notation, and if it is a legitimate move, execute it. We'll just do this over and over and over. Um, it's doable. Um... Oh, hey, can actually take a string. Okay, well, that's fortunate. So that means I don't have to necessarily modify chess.js so much for this to work. I could put some of this heavy lifting in the play controller that just says we're going to execute move. And does this return anything? It returns pretty move. So I'm guessing if we can't find a move, just yeah, then it returns null. Um, let's see. I guess there's, I don't know what this notation is to do this sort of thing, but, um, okay, or move in, I don't remember the notation, maybe it's move colon, um, response, dot history um let's say hang on one two three four chess dot move move now of course that gets rid of the need to do this chess dot load fen thing um you need to load the initial position. I don't even know if you'd have loaded that yet, but um, let me take a look. I guess when you construct one of these, um, it automatically defaults to the default position. The, yeah, what it calls default position here. Um,
Well, there's a good chance that this change I just made, which now, whoops. Um, no, no history is defined here. Never mind. Let's say that needs to be a function call, but no, it's a data attribute, uh, which has already been defined. So that's cool. Um, so, oh, here's a way for me to. Yeah, I'm probably just going to break things as I go along. Kaboom! Look at all the things I broke. Probably because I didn't restart the server um, before or after making the sort of side changes. Uh, so, okay. Yeah, I still broke it. Inspect. So, we're executing the moves instead of loading the FEM. Uh, unexpected token colon. Well, I guess that's the wrong syntax now, isn't it? Um, okay. JavaScript for loop. I could have sworn that there was a generic form of this. not work. JavaScript for each. Okay. For each is slower than four, so don't use four. Actually, dumb argument, but okay, whatever. Huh. Your best bits are usually a four of loop, array for each, a simple for loop, or four in with safeguards. What if I don't want to. I don't understand. Okay, so the keyword I was looking for was a this in keyword. So I did have it right the first time. Um, I know I've done this before. Okay, so um, Socket dot move and then we're gonna add in the move. So why not? And force reload. And we're gonna look at the console. Awesome. Just what we were looking for. Oh yeah, look at those thousands of errors just piling up. Um, that's my bad, probably. Rating filter JS6. Okay. Um, well, I think I'm going to transition into this directory now. JS app rating filter. Um, wait, so the app the error message it was getting was what? Cannot read property R of null. Jingerbell. Perfect. Ship it. Okay, what am I going to run into now? Probably that I didn't reload. 
Oh no. Okay. So now the deal here is just that this is not an active game. Um, I'm still curious why I hit that line of code so many times. Let's change this back, reload, and see what we get. Um, yeah, but why does it want to hit that line of code so many times? I just don't get it. I mean, it's not like there's anything here that forces that to get called over and over. Um, I guess it's just not satisfied somehow with not having a value. That was weird. Um, I must be trying over and over to print something for some reason there. Uh, uh. Okay, what's this for in with safeguards though? A has own property key. sparse array can be more efficient to loop um, oh okay interesting well, that's kind of special but anyway um, so part of the reason that this didn't show anything is because there's really nothing to show. Um, so, uh, what else can I do? Um, oh yeah, right, I could start a game and then check if refreshing the page gives me the game back. There's a good chance it's broken after I do a refresh, because I probably did break it. Um, hey, check that out. I could hear that noise twice. Um, whoops, well that's no good. I suppose that's what happens to have multiple tabs open. Okay. Oh, that's interesting too. So I did do the move history and did actually get the correct position somehow. Um, so where was I modifying the file? It was JS play controller. Um, oh, I was expecting to see in the console. Oh, that's not it. Gosh darn it. Look in the console. And yeah, I don't see the move printed. Whatever. I'm gonna make a move. Make a move. Oh. 
Duh, I shouldn't have been doing that. Okay, make a move. Come on, here we go. There's a move. Huh, no errors. And yet, I've broken something. Probably because I put this functionality in the wrong place. Um, so I should have been putting something in the not in clean move because that's completely the wrong place to consider putting it. Um, but instead, I should be putting that. Um, Let's see. Let's move the rook. And move the rook, and everything can move again. Um, yeah, I need to put this or calling chess.load. Oh, what? Your clean setup game. That's where I meant to put it. And chess equals new chess. Something like that. Um, okay, so that's setup game. That's where I wanted to put that. And now I need to go back into, back into the server code and get the initial position. Which I think we don't even yet have that in the chess object, but. I should have been looking at the data members of this thing. Okay, so clear. Um, yeah, this actually doesn't keep record of the position. All this is concerned with is what's the current position. Um, So yeah, in order to um, uh, let's see, yeah, I guess you're right. So I'd have to. Well, I don't have to change the server code to make this work. should be okay. Yeah, 
if not a little bit expensive, but we'll get the complete move history that way. Oh, RelayChess.org is live. Awesome. Um, do, do, do. Yeah, I'll let this guy go resign. I like that noise. So, yeah, go to RelayChess.org. And log in and look here we are see so yeah, it's good that we got this redundancy here and by redundancy I mean my site's redundant but um, yeah you're saying chess ground is only a snapshot of a position that chess has a load PGM thing uh, kind of surprised that, well, I guess it's not the chessboard responsibility to remember its initial position, but that seems like such an easy thing for it to track. Um, well, hang on, I'm still in play controller here. What was the last thing I changed? Yeah. There we go. Uh, it's possible I just completely broke the ability to create a game on my site. So go here and go back. Okay. We got a valid setup. That's not shabby. Not too shabby. Of course you know that now somebody's going to go log into both sites at once, play against the top player on each site at the same time, and gain rating points. Dun dun dun. I'm not too concerned about that possibility, but it could happen. Um, So, um, yeah, I'm surprised that the game setup worked, but it's cool. Um, let's see. Yeah, so I could take a look now back at uh, the server. Oops. And figure out what do we want to do about this FEM thing. I mean, yes, works here. Um, but I should probably. Wait. Our history. Pray tell, what is this history thing? History push. Move. Kings. Turn. Castling. Alpha Sans square half moves. Move number. That's been pretty efficient. Um, history pop. And this generates the PGN. Wow. Okay. Wait. 
there's something here about setup. Called when the initial board setup is changed with put or with remove. Oh, hang on. Header setup. Headers setup is equal to one. Come on. That's a pity that. Oh, wait, no, this. You have to construct a PGN header object first. Okay, I was going to say, why do they have this thing? Um. Yeah, apparently this does not keep track of the initial position. Um, so, Trying to think of well no, they got this thing. I could pass that along until such time we have an actual well it's redundant to pass it at this point. Um Yeah. I don't know why we were passing it in the first place if we're always gonna use the initial position. Although maybe we're not at some point in the future. Um, wait, there's a game object. Um, so this has playing, timing, spectators, current timeout, less than the time. Uh, it's username playing, get opponent, create game. It doesn't yet have concept of keeping track of start position. Whatever. Either way, the FBN and or the start position are going to be just like the initial chess setup. Um, um, so, I mean, now, now that we've got this history thing, we've got the ability to generate thematic games on spot, I guess. I don't know. Either way, these arguments are going to be totally blank and not doing very much. It's kind of silly to send them, but I don't know. So, RelayChess.org is live. Why didn't I bookmark this? Let's log out, go back to the home page. I guess, um, I guess this is what we're bookmarking is the thing here. And then we can log in here and bring us to the lobby whenever we're ready for that. That's cool. So yeah, here's a site where I don't have an advantage due to just, I don't have a home port advantage per se here. <laughs> um, at least I don't think I do. If we switch to HTML5 routing, I'm not opposed to that. Um, I know I've just put in a server redirect on my server to put us in the lobby, but um, 
or to put us in a relay directory, but yeah, HTML5 routing sounds, I, I don't even know what's involved. Let me take a look. Routing URLs and static web apps. Do, do. Oh, by default, it'll route with a hashtag. It's very easy to get clean URLs and remove the hashtag. Uh, da, da, da. Location service will automatically fall back to the hash bang method for browsers that don't support HTML5. This happens transparently and doesn't require extra work. Alright, so what's the concept here? Configure a location provider, setting the base for relative links. Location service parses the URL in the address bar and makes changes to your application, vice versa. Read through the docs and take a look at what it provides. Um, use the provider and say HTML5 mode to true. So this is just a router. I should read through the docs. So standardized way to manipulate the browser history using a script that slows Angular change the so let's angular change the routing and URLs of our pages without performing a refresh or a redirect in my case. Um, oops, the documentation moved. Uh, what is over here? Contents of hash are never sent to the server. It's allowed for in-page Oh, right. Right. One well, of the issues is that the web server needs to be reconfigured to route everything to index.html except actual files. Um, not sure what you mean Oh, otherwise you can't deep link. Oh, so Angular needs everything redirecting to index.html so Angular can take control of it. Um, I wonder how well that plays with my proxy server. <laughs> oh dear. Nothing's ever simple. I have to admit a lack of familiarity with that. This isn't the only place that cover, or I'm sorry, that sub game is called, is it? No, we also call it down here for just normal non spectator sub. Um, yeah, so, that's not going to change anything earth shattering there. Um, yeah, what I need to do is come up with a way to cache inside chest.js or inside game. What was the initial FEN? Game is probably the place to put it. Just call it like sup or something. Um, hmm. um, 
So yeah, now I've got to try. I didn't do a proper test of my changes. Um, we're passing the move history. Uh, so let me try a proper test here. It's going to look just like the original test. Okay, so good news is that the one player thinks they're white, the other player thinks they're plain black, and there's no confusion there. Oh, yeah, but I totally broke it. Um, wait, what? How is this working for one client but not the other? That doesn't make any sense. How come this only works for... Okay. What's in my other ear or my console? That's really weird. I should be able to see the moves on both boards. Um... there. Um, if I go to refresh, look at my console, move zero, move one. That's not exactly what I was looking for, but I mean, from move in response dot history. Actually, I should be able to see that in both consoles now. Um, yeah, so set up game. Hmm, I wonder why, well, let's see, uh, what if I print out the entire game history, oops, response to history, let's try refreshing this. Um, where's my console? Move E4, E5. Okay. That's interesting. Yes, this is the way to access the data. Uh, okay, I'm going to refresh that. Yeah, move E4, move E5. Now let's try that for my other client. Nice. So yeah, I'm now constructing this um, able to see complete history. It's so now I see the highlight move there, right? And now the highlight's gone, and now to actually add the highlight, um, where do I go to add that? Move. Pre-move, chess move, on promotion to finalize, uh, bar move, console log, update active player, um, shoot. Somewhere here is the thing that actually says move the damn beast. Clean move, that was what I was looking for. Um, Ground dot set last move. Uh, 
Is that something I'm able to set directly? Oh yeah, yes, yeah, so this... Wait. I'm not sure how to use the ground API to say what the last move was. Um, just a load response to FEM. Um, it's our move. Look at so the thing I want to look at is the not setup game, but move. See if that kind of move is the same kind of move as just says move history. Um, and if that is the same kind of move, then um, indicate that on the just ground board. Um, Relay. Oh. Okay, so it's in JS chess ground JS. This at least tell me the API. I don't think we're using the minified version of this, although maybe we could if we needed to, but um prep function set just ground.js. Set attributes, set scroll, set pieces, set check, set pre move. Let's pre-drop, selected. But yeah, any kind of setting done here does not seem to be uh, of the form that lets you set what was the last move that just occurred. Um, let's see. Highlight. Let last move class to squares. And check class to squares. Set drag over class and dragging over it. Um, that's kind of cool. Get function. We're going to get some idea of what the API of this thing looks like. Okay, it's a lot of functions. It's a lot to take in. Yeah, there's a lot of functionality in this uh, library. Make piece, same piece for each. Round by, go. Call user function, toggle orientation, set pieces. Set checks, onset pre move. Set score, set selected. It's movable, it's draggable. Play pre move, cancel move. Um, so, in some way, I could like play all the moves except the last one and then call play pre-move, except that's not what we want. Um, trying to render a move that's already taken place. Oh man, there's
there's all kinds of colors and arrows and stuff. I'd forgotten about that. Um, correct last move. Just ground. Duchess. Set up game, call it this way. Create new chess instance, make all the moves. That's all in place. Um, oh. Ground dot set. Here we are. Okay, and we want to look for setup game. And inside setup game, um, it's the sort of thing you want to do. Except it's not response dot move. It's um, it's var last move. It's null, and we're gonna say actually, we say last move is equal to that. Um, last moved up from, well, last moved up to. There we go. Oh, because that could be null. Uh, so I gotta comment that out. Hmm, how do I ensure that there is a move? Or do I have to call? Two different versions of this. Um, hang on. Here's what I got to do. Last move is null. Either null, I'll switch on that. Um, okay, the ternary operator is totally a thing in JavaScript. Cool. So if I reload the page, I still don't see my highlight. Um, let's see. Let's try reloading the page again. Hey, I got something highlighted. A plus, 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 plus. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing those kinds of moves are different kinds of moves. Um, okay. So I need to go to chess.js uh, last move history Oh, right, right. So, come on. Yeah, there is a function called history. Um, And 
so I have to use that to decode this here. Um, so we say last move equals chess.history. Uh, whatever the last thing is in it. Um, for a move in chess.history. This is ridiculous, but I think that'll work. Now do I get my highlight? Please? No. Okay. Um, oops, that's not right. Fast move equals move. Now do I get my highlight? No, it's still H1. Well, that's a pity. Um, yeah, I don't get it. All right, so we need to make some moves. And there's a draw. Man, that was a GM draw right there. Okay, so... Yeah, I'm confused. There's no way to get the last move. Internal representation of a chess move is an OX88 format and not meant to be human readable. Um, the code below converts that square into algebraic coordinates. It also proves an unnecessary but how do I get the thing that's got the from and the to in it? Um, I want the thing that has the from and the to. Understand. I get it that there's a move generator that generates these constructs and um, what do we do after we've built the move? Yeah, I'm just not following something here. appears I just can't get my squares to highlight correctly. I 
that's a pity. I'll save that project for other time, because I'm not... There's something I'm not understanding about it. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm back. Um, let me see. So we send the FEN would move and reconstruct the entire uh, chest JS object. I did that because we want to ensure there's no... Uh, yeah, right. Sending the entire move history is ridiculous. There's a nice way to debug. Right debugger. Um, where you want to... Cool. Yeah, I just, I don't know this API, and I could figure it out, but it's not worth it right now. Um, yeah, sending the entire history, every move is ridiculous. Although this is the setup game command. Like, this is when I hit the refresh button. Um... Maybe in setup game it's not entirely crazy to send a whole move list, but sending the previous FEN plus the last move might be cool. But whatever. Um, uh, but yeah, it's very functional. It's just we don't have highlights, and but nobody cares. I'm the only one who cares. I'm too picky. Honestly, the thing I should probably focus on at the moment is just, like, this visualization, but, um, yeah, either way. Go back to lobby, everything's all here in working order. Um, that's cool, though, you can force the Chrome to go into the debugger. Um, I think even visually they have ways for you to set breakpoints too. Anywho, um, oh hey look we got people on the server. That's cool. Welcome to RelayChess.org. That's cool how I could pre-move this. That makes sense, though. That's potentially a legal move. Even though there aren't any opposing moves that could allow me to do this, but that's too hard to check. Um, I'm trying to remember... Oh, there was something kind of crazy I did want to test out with pre-moves. Um, the idea would be you pre-move something. Like, say, I put my knight on g4. And then my opponent decides to stick a piece in the way, and I've already pre-moved that it's moving like a bishop. Um, that'd be kind of a fun thing to test out at some point. Although you need to have the right latency to try it out. Um... Oh, verbose gives an object with the proper from and to. Okay. Well, I will bear that in mind. Um, I'll give that another try. almost want to argue that it should be legal if you can get away with it to make that kind of crazy pre-move that I was talking about. Um. <laughs> that That's kind of like prone to all kinds of abuse though. Uh, hang on while I develop my rook. And in so developing, unhang it. <laughs> I'm so good at this.
my mic while I have something to eat here. Check.
check. Check. Check. Check.
Ooh, that's a lot of poo. Or rather, a lot of snacking. <laughs> Man, I haven't had lunch though, so I had to do something. Oops. Well, well, well. This is what I get for attempting to be clever. Let this be a lesson to anybody who thinks they're clever. Three pawns? Uh, okay, apparently I'm missing more than I thought. Um, I'm trying to set all these clever traps and I'm like nowhere even remotely close to having it. Um, um, okay, let's get the king out of there. Before I find a way to hang even more pieces. <laughs> Man, this hurts. Okay, I'll try to stifle that. I think that's what he's going for. <laughs> go, puns, go. That's not a free pun. Who knew? Well, maybe I'm getting something out of this. Yeah, everything's hard to calculate in this game. Like, I didn't even see this coming. I was kind of forced to play it, and thankfully it's okay. beautiful thing about this is that the king can only move like a king in this position. So, um, indeed, there's no way to protect this bishop. I don't know if I want the bishop. It could be trouble. Trouble right here in River City. Capital T, that rhymes with P, and that stands for pool. Alright, so... Yeah, I've got to take the pawn. Yeah, same colored bishops are pretty awesome. do I do here? Um, I guess I just develop rationally. Yeah, that's the thing is I'm supposed to try to make it a big deal somehow that I'm up in exchange, look at me. And making that a big deal is very difficult. Oh, F3's not in any way hanging, is it? Um, okay, so I should just attempt to um, trade off the rooks. Uh, 
I don't know. It really depends. That bishop can only attack squares of a single color at a time. Um, oh, did I walk into that? Did I ever? Um, do I have any way out of it? Or am I just screwed? Uh, well, no, that's just me being stupid. Or greedy. Or both. Um, see, I'm trying to find if there's anything I can do here. I don't think there is. So we're just gonna have to play this end game. Yeah, karma does get served in this game, that's for sure. It's not the world's easiest endgame, though. Check. Oh, I forgot. His king can check me. I'm not the only one who can use a king to get a check. Okay, well that's kind of inconvenient, shall we say. Yeah, King G8 would have been interesting. I don't know if it would have been good or not. Because I've got King E7 against it. And this king is kind of in a special place.
Yeah, I saw that after I moved. <sighs> I saw that after I moved. When I finally have set up the fortress. <laughs> this is hard because, um, well, I don't know. There's just lots of tactics that are possible. I think I would be better at this game if I did not hang pieces. I think that's a fair statement. That I could actually be good at this. But, um, I mean, goodness, I managed to hold that. If I had not hung the rook on the final move and just started moving my king back and forth on the rank, or even started pushing my queenside pawns in some kind of reasonable manner. But yeah, it's tricky to find these ideas with nine seconds on the clock. Um, yeah, it's definitely a really challenging game. I'm definitely kicking myself over that, but... What can you do? Uh, what can you do? All right, I get white. It's about damn time. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, so here we go. For no reason. Okay. I like this way of developing. It's just creative. You don't get this opportunity in normal chess. Uh, We could play an end game. Maybe. Oh. Wait, but now I don't get to double his pawns. That's unfortunate. I figured at least if I could double the pawns, there might be something for me to play against there, but at the last second I saw that his bishop protects the queen. Um, bummer.
damn the mouse. <laughs> uh, okay, that, that's my fault. Uh, I release it an instant too soon. That was a finger failure right there. I was attempting, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's entirely on me for not fixing my damn mouse. Also for not being super careful in playing that move. Um, so. <sighs> so now I get to suffer this position. It's going to be great. We're going to make chess great again. Okay. Moving the king carefully, such as to ensure the castling does in fact occur. Yeah, I don't know. People, even on Lee chess, people don't, aren't happy with take backs. I just need to get a mouse that works. Actually, you could just make buttons that say castle, castle queen side, castle king side. Just click the button and it makes the move for you. <laughs> Not the most terrible idea ever. Uh, why did I think that that, uh, why am I so dumb? Thankfully it's defended anyhow, but, um, well, they're not happy with take backs because some people offer them and some people don't. I know why no, I think that was defended. It's because now that I moved the rook away from here, it protects that, which protects this. So I can do that. Oh, right. I knew that. Um. Okay, move your king like a rook. I dare you. King doesn't go too far. Um. <laughs> Look both ways, cross the street, and hopefully don't hang everything. But, you know, what can you do? Oh, I see the point there. Well, gotta step out of the threat. So here we go. Oh, well, no, back here, the queen was protecting the bishop. The bishop was protecting the rook. However, the pawn on g7 was not protected. All right. Oh, damn it. This is defended. Damn, damn, damn. Well, um, uh, just go back here. I've got to get better at this, seeing what's defended. And by extension, what isn't. <laughs> okay. I should have done this last move. It's going to cost me dearly that I procrastinated on it. Um, okay, well, just move some pawns. Move some pawns. And be super careful about what happens. Um, see, in normal chess, these pawns might be enough to make up for the material deficit. Um, relay chess, it's a bit more challenging. Uh, 
just the queen to the front lines. Nothing wrong with that strategy. Um, I can't even think of a good waiting move. Well, do I sack? That might be my only way forward. <sighs> well, okay, I'm gonna do this. Can't even be subtle about it, I just have to do it. Uh, saying in normal chess and under that circumstance where he's offering to give up a second pawn the two pawns could almost be compensation for bishop right yeah no i was planning to save that for an opportune tricky moment and just, I didn't have constructive moves, so I had to play it right away. And that disappoints me. I had hoped to save that tricky move for a better occasion. It would have been so beautiful. Um, I see where this is going, and I don't like it. Whatever. YOLO. Um. Okay. That makes things more complicated. I'm dumb. I'm dumb, yeah. dumb, dumb. All right, here we go. <laughs> That's not wise. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's checkmate. Eh, whatever. Yeah, the other move when he played the queen here to check me with however that worked. I should have just done this. I suck at this. Okay, I'm going to speed this up. And hopefully not hang so many pieces. <clears throat> uh, no, I knew that king takes bishop was completely ridiculous, but I was bored.
Yeah. Yeah. I, I need to, like, not play bad moves. I can't believe I'm below 1,500. <laughs> well. Uh, it's bound to happen sooner or later. Okay. So fine, I'll have to play normal chess openings. How about that? All this fancy stuff, because, uh, I mean, experimenting tends to get me um, killed in this game pretty badly. I mean, I'm putting the challenges out there, and he's not taking them, so... What do you want me to do? Yeah, you got a bishop here that moves like a bishop. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll have to switch to d4 or something. This thing I've been doing doesn't seem to be working so well. At least it's white. We'll see just what direction this game goes. Uh, we get a closed game. Um, This is interesting for many reasons. Um, I'm sure he calculated bishop takes knight, but I'm not so sure he calculated this. This is kind of complicated. Actually, I lied. That's oh, I I lied again. Okay, everything's hanging. Everything's on fire. Um, don't know what's going on. Here we go. Something happened there. What it is, is ain't exactly clear. There's a man with a gun over there telling me I gotta beware. And saying, stop, hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. Um... But no, I think I did okay. Uh, Bishop, I don't know. Why not everything? 
Um, so I think I'm collecting at least one of these exchanges back. See, I'm getting not so bad if I just don't hang my stuff. Um, okay, that's kind of complicated. That's really complicated. <laughs> so if I play knight g6, I think I get muted. Um, just to give you an idea of what's going on there. Here, let's take the rook. So, I think I'm doing okay here. Maybe. Um, okay, we'll block the check. Uh, how do I develop my stuff? So we step out of a pin? I don't know. Here's a safe direction go. Oh, that's a... No, yeah, you're right, guys. This That's the move. That's not pin. Yeah, I miss it. That's definitely the move in that position. I also fixate on the possibility of um, just getting this rook out of the corner that I didn't see that. You know. Oh, I forgot, this only moves like a knight. My, how inconvenient. Oh, right. Oh, the rook doesn't communicate its powers that way. Yeah, I know. See, when I up material, I can convert that. So it's being down a piece or two that kind of hurts. Also, that was faster time control, so maybe maybe I need to balance things out here. Um, yeah, unpins are the best invention of um, Relay Chess. The idea that you could be in a pin at the beginning of a turn and then suddenly not in a pin. It's crazy. Yeah, sacrifices... Um, I haven't found a way to make them work. Well, you have to remember, there's, our rating deviation started at like 700. But yeah, it takes a while to get that RD pretty low. Actually, we're looking at double the RD there. Um, so the RD here is like 190. Um,
Okay. I feel kind of honor bound. Well, here we go. There's a move you don't see in normal chess. B5. <laughs> I was going to say felt honor bound castle um, opposite sides, but why castle? Where is the fun in castling? Fun is that you don't get mated. Just FYI for those who don't know. But hey, there's a possibility that I might not get mated. I'm probably getting mated. Oh, look. Pawn fork. Um, careful. Here we go. Yeah. After we played d4, I forgot that b5 is just outright hanging. Um, that was my bad. Also, I might not be winning this. Yep, I might not be winning this. Here we go. Doubling down on, tripling down on the gambit. Uh, who needs a queen? It's just a queen. Oh, I'm not very good at this defense thing. Do I even try that? Is that where I want to go? I'm going to settle for the obvious thing. Um... have to do this. That's interesting. For so many reasons. Um, He did the same thing. Uh, I was hoping you wouldn't do that. Um,
I mean, that rook takes h5 is pretty exciting, I'll say. Oh, yeah, I wonder what's the most checks you could give at once. Uh, just as an interesting engineering challenge. Gosh darn it. I have to delay my decisive victory for a while. As I shuffle into the perfect formation. I'm still trying to figure out what's the most checks that a player could give in a single move. Um, okay, well, that's unfortunate. Um, that makes this position a little bit more difficult. Yeah, I think I could resign that. All right. Oh. I have to click and be careful not to release the mouse button accidentally. Uh, that's on me. Although, in fairness, I was down... Well, I got to the point where it was just a rook for a queen there. Is it okay if we keep playing? Oh, sorry, I missed that. Um, I mean, at that point, I had two rooks for a queen, rook, and bishop. Oh, you mean, well, I see that nobody else is logged in, so I don't know what to say. Anybody else wanted to play? The URL's right there, it's just relaychess.org. Um, um, okay. We're going to turtle it up. By that, I mean, hopefully, play something that doesn't get me made right out of the opening. It's a really lofty expectation. Here we go. Look at that careful click and not release. Um, okay, fortunately I only needed to move that a single square. No, actually it's just relaychess.org. The one that I'm linking to is the dev server, because um, I haven't been able to update that while I'm playing.
Do not panic. Do not panic. Okay. Wait, why don't I just do the phalanx thing every time? Pieces are worth so much more than pawns. I just move up all the pawns one rank, and then move them up another rank. I should do that. It sounds so much simpler. I don't know what I normally try. Um, Hmm. You know, I will say that rook f6 is sneaky, but um, it actually protects this pawn way too many times. So it's like not even sneaky. Sneaky bit is that the knight protects it, and this knight protects it, and the rook and the king all protect that. Um, Okay. Just mosey on over here. Um, think I'm not hanging on all my stuff. Well, yeah, if you just type over your password, you have to send an email to the server administrator, you know? Standard policy. Um, okay. So, eh, we'll trap the bishop. Please tell me this works. Please tell me this works. This does not work. And that's not even check. Oh, come on. I bet the farm on it and it's not even real. But it still looks cool and it, it's going to accomplish something. Um, something's probably it's just going to get me killed, but whatever. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Also not check. Not check to your king. Very merry unbirthday to you. When have I ever typoed on a password? Other than, like, every time. Okay, I'll just protect the bishop. That's all we're doing is just protecting the bishop. But seriously, protecting it is kind of important. Um, Check. might as well. There's no reason for me not to do this. Hopefully there's no reason for me to not do that either.
just helping him achieve his goals. Hey, look, a pin that didn't cost me my entire army. Kind of problematic. I don't even have my traps set up right. It's not letting me set them up. It's so mean. Oh wow, that knife could go everywhere. Um. Hmm. And go here. That situation wasn't going to improve anyhow. Just make the best of this. This might not be going well. Ha! 
because I can. Not because it matters, just because I can. I wasn't going to win that now, was I? Okay. <laughs> I'm not making it easy. Alright, let's see who's... Oh, that's probably a bit brutal for a first game for whoever takes that, so... Whatever. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and then there's Lokoff there. Nan plus minus Nan. That's pretty cool. Jeez. Oh. I've got to do better at the not hanging pieces thing. Oh, okay. In fact, I could spectate this game and show what spectating's like. Oh my goodness. Why are there two ratings? There's one rating. Um, and it shows you that that rating has an estimate and a range. So we know with some confidence where your rating actually lies. When a player list, yeah. No, there's a timing issue. I did notice that. I didn't want to bring too much attention to it, but yeah, there's a real minor timing issue there. Reason has to do with when the ratings list gets published. Oh, that's fine. It's a good question. Oh, oh. Ooh, oh, white is victorious. One more move. And that could have had a different result. White's victorious. <laughs> that was exciting. Let's see. Yeah. Number one. Yeah, that, that's how the ratings, that's how the player list is ordered. It, it's to make Mr. Corrupted number one. Um, that's what the algorithm is to sort those things. Okay, well, we're going to play French, Spanish, German, Italian, Polish opening. You might have heard of it. Um, Yeah, no, it's, okay, cool. I was to say, it's really no big deal, because that gets published really frequently anyhow. But in circumstances where that does get out of sync, it can desync and whatever. Okay, well that was fun. Um, mistakes were made. <sighs> mistakes were made. Okay, trying to climb my way back up to the top here. It's going to be a long climb. Um, Oh, I can actually play the Spanish. I have no idea how terrible this is. I'm sure we'll know in just a moment. Hmm. 
Nope. We're gonna play this positionally. We're actually gonna go play like that whole. Oh, I'm but I'm not playing knight b2, so it's not like the whole GM shtick. Um. I take your knight. Probably not the knight you thought I was gonna take. Why didn't I see that? You'd think I would see some more of these things after a while. Uh, let's try this. How bad could this be? If only Zog had Bishop takes c5 in his study. <laughs> Did that actually follow his study game? Because that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, no, this might be legit sack. Because I can follow this up with this yeah. check. So there's actually, it's it's not sacking material for just nothing. Sacking it for ever slightly more than nothing. But no, an exposed king is probably worth something. Okay, so how do I play this? Do I sack another piece? Do I double down on sack? This actually looks legit. I mean, I've got knight takes f6. Oh, knight d5 is not as crushing as I thought. And I've got knight f5. Um, knight f5 looks like the way to go here. Oh, well, I thought he had g6. If, oh, but then I could take f6. Right. Yeah, no, that, that would have been a better way to approach this. I saw them, considered it, and I just thought it didn't work. And I was mistaken. Yeah, knight h5 immediately is kind of a massive improvement. So, what do I do now? Okay, I have to admit I didn't see that. Okay, we're going to protect that. Pretend I'm not, like, randomly hanging stuff all over the place. Here, if we're going to exchange, it's going to be on my terms. My terms, this square. Hmm. That's tricky.
There we go. Managed to avoid queen trade. And probably stumble into something worse. But I tried. It's defended. Ah, there goes my plan. Well, plan B would be what? I don't know. should look not once but maybe twice before I leave although the, in fairness there wasn't anything better I could have done Check. yeah all right we're taking that I'm kind of down a rook, um, so winning this might be difficult. There's a chance I might just have to draw this instead of winning it. Well, here's the part where I have to just resort to making shuffling moves until um, something happens. Interesting. Check. This might be difficult to win. Check. Uh, the brute force method. Fine. We'll do it this way. He 
He found it. He found it. That's how you mate with the Rook and King. Uh, bummer. Okay, so yeah. I should have done that Knight H5. It would have been crushing. Oh well. I missed it. Can't believable. Can't believable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're sacking. Or not. Here we go. Move to d4. Look at that. Look at that beautiful pawn. Oh yeah, I've got an open G file for my rook. That's OG, open G file. Oh, hey, look, now that's a clever idea. Why don't I do that? Yeah, just move the knight over and develop it this way. That's actually really clever. Fine. If you want to exchange, we can exchange. Hmm. Well, you gotta develop the rook somehow. Yeah, but such rating swings are to be expected when you're starting a new account. That's legal. Not what I was expecting, but entirely legal. I was thinking just take the pawn. Um, but okay. It's good that I can see a hanging thing once in a while. Um, no, there's no 2000 just yet. One of us would seriously have to understand this game for that to happen. Uh, like, we would have to develop some relay chess opening theory for somebody to hit 2,000. super ultra difficult to um, win any material. <clears throat> Everything's defended like one more time than it's attacked, which makes this variant extremely challenging. It's all about finding the right balance of offense and defense where everything is defended. 
you think something's hanging and it totally isn't. And that's extremely just difficult to cope with. Um, yeah, I mean, you saw me almost manage to get a fortress that one queen was this rook endgame. Um, it didn't work out, but I made pretty decent try at it. Um, if I play that, okay, this one's a pawn, right? Yeah, I honestly don't know what to do about time controls and ratings. Um, it might be... Yeah. It might be too early to do such separation. I know the only reason they did it on fix was because somebody started playing tons and tons of bullet games. And it was only after numerous games that there was any reason to even consider changing it. Um, amazing how quickly these pieces can redevelop and redeploy. Um, I just have to get faster calculating, you know? <laughs> no. No. I get it's hard. Yeah, it's great that King can just run. That leads to the most crazy sorts of King chases. And although that does discourage you from sacking material. Um, I'm just taking this very slowly and patiently here. Careful not to subject myself to something stupid. Because I'm in control of this position. So why... Why release control? Okay. Yeah, I do have this move here.
10-0. Let's see, there's no games in play, which means if I put a seek out, and there's four of us here in the lobby, there's three people who might be able to take that. Um, although it's possible, I don't know what everybody's moods are at at this point, but yeah. Um, Alright, I'm going to attempt a sack again. The fake out, the take out, the break out. Oh, okay. Here we go. got some imbalances here guys we've got some imbalances here whoops just develop another piece and another piece I think it depends on the position knights are super confusing they feel strong, but are they strong? I don't know. That said, I just traded my bishop for a knight, so, I mean, take everything with a grain of salt. Or a vat of salt. Um... Yeah, that's covered. Okay, now he's got an <laughs> That's an interesting way to add an attacker. Um, fine, we'll deal with that attacker. Somehow. Here, I add an, a defender. A bold strategy, Cotton. I guess in this position the knight is really strong. <sighs> okay, I thought that was going to turn out differently. I thought I was going to end up taking an f3. Then I saw like, wait, if I do knight takes f3 check, he does bishop takes queen, and it's no longer check. But I still found a good move, so it's okay. It's just that my process of getting there was anything but thinking like a grandmaster. Yeah, king e2 might have been a bit much. I don't know that you can afford to move your king forward while all your pieces are practically in the corner. Um, it seemed like a bit of a stretch.
Okay, so I think I just play queen d3. Wait. Queen d3 helps this king escape. Um, how about this? This seems like a sensible move. Defending pawn. And accomplishing a few other things, but mainly just defending pawn. Um, queen d3 mate. Queen d3 is mate, maybe? Yeah, I evaluated that correctly. Oh my goodness. You could make puzzles that are just mate and one puzzles. You realize how hard those are. Yeah. Queen d3, king e1, bishop b5 looked good, although then... His king can just move, like, to h1, and my pieces are misplaced. Um, having your rook protecting the king actually defends it pretty well. <laughs> it's tricky to deal with a defended king. Um, well. Yeah, that's a tricky thing. Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed? Not me. Whew. Well, I'm back. Well, oh, that's over 1500 a while ago. But look at my RD. My RD is half of that 273. So, um. My RD is 137-ish. So I've almost gotten an established rating. But furthermore, we know that based on this estimate, I'm not over 2,000. Like, you could say that for some other people, maybe they're potentially over 2,000. Like, they're corrupted, is sitting there with this 1577 rating plus or minus 426. If you add 426 to 1577, um, you get 2003. So he could potentially, he might be a 2000, we don't know. Uh, sometimes I experience that, like everybody stops talking and I don't know why. All right. Oh, game aborted. That's cool. Whatever. So. Man, that checkmate last game was tricky. And like, I think queen d3 is checkmate, but you know, if it's not, then the only way it's not checkmate is if I'm losing my queen. Because it's pretty common that I will check an opponent with a piece, and then my piece disappears from the board. Um, pretty common. Probably more common than it should be. So, is really chess tricky or what? Um, More incentive to add game chat on the site. <laughs> I mean, there should be buttons for trash talking, right? I just, you would never want that. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, since we got a minute, I'll pull down whatever improvements or changes were made. Uh, pull or 
Virtual Master. Uh, something like that. Get log. Oh, fix sorting users like Look02 rating. Spay. Well, and apparently, since I've got another moment here, um, let's see. Go. There we go. Oops. Okay. Um, and then we got to go into server. And what was that I was searching for? It was. Well, history will do work. Um, game setup. Right. Set up game. There it was from Handle Games. Uh, we we're saying that if I just say I want verbose history, that that's what you do. Function options. Oh, so have to say verbose is equal to true. So to define a map, I do it like this, and go back and play our game. Hey, all right. Yeah. All right. Um, I guess since he's playing this kind of formation, I'm going to just play a normal chess formation so we have some imbalance and how things just look, if not are. Um, Okay, this does not hang the bishop, this does not hang the bishop, this does not hang the bishop. I'm probably going to hang it soon. Let's move it back so we don't hang it. You know that I'm itching to castle the other way, just to get something crazy going here. So I'm going to see if I can make that happen. If not, no big deal. Okay, it's happening. Nothing's holding me back from doing it. Funny thing is, I have another step of this plan that's even more outrageous. And it actually looks sensible in some ways. Um, yeah, let's trade bishops. Okay, and let's bring this rook forward to protect the knight. Finally, um, just move the king all the way over here. There. So you built up this attack over here. And now where's it going? I could actually just move my king all the way back there to defend this fort. <laughs> if this ever, if this attack ever dries up, I just go back. Um, it's great. It's wonderful. Hmm. 
Okay, so how do I continue from here? I'm thinking I just want to sack this pawn. So he takes my pawn. <sighs> Why stop at just sacking a pawn? Oh, wow! Okay. Well, something's going to happen this game. I can assure you that. I don't know what. Definitely something. I keep forgetting how easily it uh, reversed some attacks are. Um, so, what do I do? Oh wait, this could be fun. Let's have some fun with this. This could be fun. Okay, well, or you just give me the exchange. I actually had something fun playing if you did king h2, because then I take the bishop. King and the queen. It would have been beautiful. I planned all that out, too, and it never happened. So sad. So sad. Oh well. Um. <laughs> Threat number one. That's not cool. Oh, okay, never mind. This gets kind of fun now. He had knight e3, which would have rebuffed yeah. this. Um, oh my goodness, I'm terrible at this game. Well, okay, we'll find a way to win this somehow. I thought I. And with this, like, dual threat, I keep forgetting bishops move sideways. It's difficult enough to remember in normal chess that queens move sideways. I was expecting king b1. And then I take a bishop. And then I get to win an endgame. Oh, man. Well, this is going to get a bit more challenging now. Um, okay, I advance my king. Ah, we're playing a special kind of chess where defended pieces get super uh, abilities based on what's defending them. Like that king was defending the bishop, so the bishop was able to move like a king. Um... Basically, the reason I'm doing this ridiculous yeah. king move um, is because I'm kind of screwed here no matter what. Yeah. So, 
Gotta try to stir up some trouble somewhere before uh, this goes through. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I see the check. Well, that's a clever check. This doesn't actually do anything. Just yeah, FYI. It looks clever. That's about the extent of what it does. Oops, well that doesn't work so well. Yep, the king defends the queen because the king is protected by the rook. Oh, that definitely did it. Wow, I've almost hit 1500 again. Bummer. Bummer. Oh well, what can you do? It's uh, just spectacular how bad I am in hanging pieces. Somehow at faster time controls, just my random shuffling confuses people. But I play too provocatively, just because I'm getting bored very easily. That's kind of a shame. <laughs> yeah, that rating has 14 decimal points of accuracy. So, that's, I mean, clearly if we added more decimal points, it would be even more accurate. Uh, wow, that's a pity. So, I don't know. Maybe someday this site will have the critical mass that where there will always be people here. Um, it seems like people uh, have probably just had enough of these games for the moment. Um, it's kind of a pity, but you know, I'm sure Zug will be thrilled. Um, oh, I forgot to check. Now that we've got this site up and active, I can um, just audit. Wait, I got 432 errors loading the page. What have I done wrong? Uh, clear console. Reload page. Okay, I don't have 432 errors anymore. Um, so let's audit the page. Okay, so yeah. Uh, FYI, the um to probably message some streamers and yeah right yeah people do have to eat and stuff too i could probably message some streamers and post some more stuff on reddit to get it noticed right so yeah it's gonna take some pr work to get this noticed um you're not seeing what i'm seeing here so let me clue you guys in on what i'm seeing so Display capture, here we go. 
so that's why I did some profiling on this main page. Um, the site will perform better if uh, browser caching is leveraged by the web server. Yeah, it's, it's still in beta at this point. I mean, at one point, Leechus was kind of beta-ish anyhow, but, um, yeah. Yeah, once it's ready, I mean, gosh, we don't have some things that some players might want, but it's unfortunate that even during this development phase, um, there aren't enough people just to, like, I don't know. I remember when I had engines running 24-7 on um, my Lee Chess instance, and people would just stop by pretty, pretty frequently and try out the engines and try to beat them. Um, although I guess now that those engines are, or Stockfish is now on Lee Chess, um, playing all these variants, people don't need to go to my site anymore to play against it. So that's cool. Um, so, so, oh, but yeah, I was going to say, um, one thing that might be worth doing is, um, leveraging the browser caching here and uh, the web server needs to specify um, the cache max duration or such um, such that this uh, can get reloaded when it needs to reload or at least for the CSS files things would load faster and stuff it's not a big deal um, but yeah ultimately before we go live it'd be nice to get this right um, I guess at the current moment, um, these J JavaScript files could change pretty frequently. Um, I'll show you guys what I did on my instance, if I can remember where I did it. Um, let's see, Apache 2, right? And then I went to, where was it? Gosh darn it. Huh. I'm confused. Oh, okay. So it'd be one of those last four things. Um, let's see. I think it was... Let's see. List. Sites. Enabled. Stuff. Um, that's not it. Oh, yeah. It was mods. Uh, list mods. Um... Show them in order of what's been edited recently. Uh, apparently, everything's been edited recently. Huh, didn't know that. Okay. Um, gosh darn it. Uh, grip, cache, control. Here we are. Oh, sites available. That's where I had to put it. Should probably change this at some point um but yeah this says that javascript and css and all these files um will be uh, what's the word cached they'll be cached for a couple hours uh i could probably bump that down to one hour oops this is a read only file um so let's change that and here we go. So we say one hour. Or maybe we just leave it to. I don't know. Like while I'm developing things, this probably shouldn't even be two hours. Um, yeah, but these are the settings that are used, I think, by... I forget who it was. Apache? Some... Uh, anyhow, I was looking at like Stack Overflow and Google and trying to find out how do you cache things, um, how you direct that caching should occur. And this is like the best example I could find. And the beautiful thing here is like, see where it says MP3 and shop quake flash and scalable vector graphic and graphics interchange format. 
and portable network graphic and joint pictures experts group and the abbreviated form of that. And I think this is like flash video and portable document format and icon. I mean, all those things are things that aren't going to change very often. So, yeah. Uh, I think those would be things that we're changing on uh, the RelayChess.org server. Um, And let's see. Yeah, feel free to search Google to try to find these sort of things if you're curious. Um, this is just your standard HT. Well, this isn't the HE access log, but this is the default site configuration. Okay. So, hmm. something for me to experiment with at some time or I don't know see if I could come up with a better way to do this um, there's really chess.org um, yeah I'll show you guys how I did the nginx stuff it's a reverse proxy server um, I had to learn this the hard way to get um, Lee Chess running on my instance, although fortunately there's pl uh, plenty of documentation to explain it. Um, but yeah, you just say, I want you to listen on port 80 and redirect traffic, um, and redirect all traffic on port 80 that's directed at this name called relaychess.moo.com. Uh, and um, redirect that to port 8080 on the local machine and all that fun stuff. Um, I think, wait, where was it? It wasn't port 8080. Where did I have like port 3000? I have it here somewhere. Okay. Oh, no, I don't. No. Okay, so this is just for authentication. I'm sorry, no, this is just for the static content. For static content, it redirects to the Apache server running on port 8080. The Apache server has the index.html page. Um, so you see the index.html, um, which just redirects to relay slash index.html. And that page um, connects to... Um, where does it do this? Oh gosh, where did I put it? Oh, it's actually, yeah, now it's in some sort of configuration file that's referenced from index.html. Um, so, anyhow, that's how it all works. Um, so we got, if people connect from the outside world to port 80, redirects the local machine running Apache at 8080. Apache, in turn, loads index.html. Index.html runs all the scripts. The scripts use the Angular framework to reference ports 9090 for the authentication server. And once you're connected, then to establish the web socket at port 3000. So it took a little gymnastics to figure that out, but we got it. Um, that said, it sounds like people seen enough real just for the moment um so i might take a short break um maybe come back with just a more casual game something where i'm not going to hang pieces left and right every game who knows we'll see all right um so yeah thanks for watching hope you enjoyed and i'll see you next time